Okay. All right. Welcome to the January 26, 2022 meeting of the Parks and Recreation Commission. This is a teleconference meeting with commission members, city staff, and members of the public participating remotely to ensure proper social distancing in this federal, state, and local emergency. I'd like to introduce staff and commission members present. Commissioners present include Vice Chair Jennifer Braskin, Commissioner Peter Diepenbrock, Commissioner Peter Joshua, and Chair David Thomas. Staff present includes Library and Community Services Director Sean Reinhardt, Assistant Library Services Director Nick Shegda, Acting Assistant Community Services Director Rondell Howard, Recreation Supervisor Todd Zio. Assistant Director Shegda is also the staff liaison for the commission. Uh, Assistant Director Shegda, will you please take a moment and provide instructions to the commission and members of the public on how the meeting will proceed. Thank you, Chair Thomas. Uh, commissioners are asked to please keep your cameras on and your microphone silenced uh, until recognized by the chair. Um, you can use that raise hand function at the bottom of your Zoom screen or just raise your hand on camera uh, until you're recognized. Uh, for members of the public, uh, especially members of the public who would like to speak to the commission, the chair will call for public comment uh, on items not on the agenda first, and then he will be calling for comments on each item on the agenda as we go through. He'll explain that again when we get there. If you wanna make a public comment, either on an item on the agenda or not on the agenda, uh, when we get to that point, use that raise hand function on the bottom of your Zoom screen. Uh, it'll sort you in the order that you raised your hands uh, on my screen so I can uh, call on you. Um, and then I will recognize you and unmute you and allow you to speak. Uh, please state your name clearly and uh, the jurisdiction in which you live. And then you have uh, three minutes to make your public comment. Um, I think that's it. I don't think I left anything off. Back to you, Chair Thomas. And maybe one thing I'll, I'll preface um, my next spiel with is that uh, we have the agenda. It's on the city website. And you know, we are anticipating um, perhaps some public comments uh, around pickleball. And so before we get to that item, there will also be kind of a period dedicated to that. Um, so I just wanted to make that known. So that being said, under public comment, the public may address the commission on any subject not listed on the agenda. Each speaker may address the commission once under public comment for a limit of three minutes. Please clearly state your name and address or political jurisdiction, what you live. The commission cannot act on items not listed on the agenda. And therefore the commission cannot respond to non-agenda issues brought up, up, up under public comment other than to provide general information. Assistant Director Shegda, do we have any public comments? So at this time, if any member of the public would like to make a comment not about an item not listed on the agenda, please use that raise hand function at the bottom of the Zoom screen, or if you're dialing in, uh, press star nine on your phone now. I see one public comment. Uh, the commenter is Vern Leslie. I'm gonna wait till this train goes by and then I'm gonna um, allow you to uh, address the commission. And you can go ahead and unmute yourself and address the commission. Okay, I'd just like to know what the role of the commission is. What is, the, what is your role? What is the process here? If we bring something to your attention, what is the process from that point onward? Um, I guess it would depend on what the item is, Mr. Leslie. Um, usually you, you don't have to attend a, a meeting of the commission to bring something to the Park and Recreation Commission's attention. In other words, if there's an issue that you have or a suggestion you'd like to make, um, you can do that by email to the commission, um, but things have to be agendized because of the Brown Act for the commission to discuss them. And that's uh, to make it so that all of the discussions of the commission are in public and everyone has noticed that 
an issue is going to be discussed by the commission. Did that answer your question? Not really, no. I wanna know what your role is. Do you have a decision-making role? Do you have the power to change things? That's what I wanna know. No, the Parks and Recreation okay. Commission is an advisory body to the city council. Okay, thank you. Do you have any other comments, Mr. Leslie? No, that's it. Thank you very much for your comment. Are there any other public comments on items not on the agenda? Going once, seeing none, back over to you, Chair Thomas. Okay, we'll proceed to our presentation. Ashley Quintana and Solon Stewart Rose from Meta are here to make the presentation. Um, so you two can go ahead. Amazing. Thank you, Chair Thomas. And good evening, commissioners and everyone from the community of Menlo Park. Thank you for having us here today. So let me just share my screen. Okay. Everyone able to see it? Yes. I'm going to take that as a yes. Yes. Uh, <laughs> great. Um, so good evening, everyone. I'm Ashley Quintana. I am part of our community engagement team here at Meta, also known, well, formerly known as Facebook. And I'm here with my colleague, Solon Stewart-Rose, who is the project manager of this open space. And so we're hoping today we can walk you all through what this looks like. And we're so excited to share with you all about our soft opening of this space. So we will go... Oh, give me one second. So we'll go through the details of the park and the bridge, our, also our guidelines of the space, and then we'll do an aerial walkthrough so you can all just experience uh, what we are talking about. And finally, um, talk more about the community celebration that we hope to have in the spring, um, which we had to delay just due to the COVID status right now um, and having that later on. So with that, Solon. Thanks, Ashley. Um, hello, everyone um, from the community and <clears throat> to the to the council as well. Um, today, we're here to talk about the opening of the new Meta Park and the pedestrian and bike bridge. Um, this is something that we've been working on for a long time, both with city staff um, and the community, uh, to ensure that we <laughs> are following through on our commitment to create. Um, wonderful community amenities, um, specifically for the neighborhood of Bellhaven, but also to connect all of Menlo Park to uh, the Bay Trail and, and beyond. Um, the COVID-19 pandemic has really underscored how important parks are to our, to our physical and mental health, and we're really excited to finally be delivering on um, a brand new park. Um, so there's two, two portions of, of what we are delivering here. The first is a public park that you can see here on the image. Um, it contains two main portions. Uh, there's a large plaza at the top of the screen that you can see that can potentially hold community events like the farmer's markets that we host um, or winter fairs, other things that we're hoping to be able to hold um, once the pandemic uh, hopefully slows to an end. And then in the middle of the screen, you can see a large grass lawn. It's gonna be great for kids to play on and people to have picnics and hang out. And then there's a variety of walking paths that kind of stroll throughout these beautiful gardens. Um, by the time the spring gets here, these, this entire park is really going to be flourishing with flowering trees and plants and, and be a really amazing place to stop and reflect um, and, and really enjoy the nature. Um, this was designed around the local flora um, of Northern California and the Bay Area. We have oak trees and um, native grasses that really help accentuate uh, the beauty that we that we all love and appreciate of, of the Bay Area. Um, it's located right at the entrance um, from Chilco next to the fire station. So as Chilco turns the corner uh, going towards um, Constitution Drive, there's now a big entry there along with the newly repaved Chilco Street that has bike paths on both the north and south side and new sidewalks that we've built and delivered over the last couple of years. Um, this space, I think, is going to be a, a really incredible place to kind of connect the Bay Trail, which is such an incredible um, amenity for the community, but it's always been really difficult to get to. 
Um, and maybe with that, we can go to the next slide, which is really that big connection point. I'm sure everyone here has seen the gigantic yellow bridge that, that crosses Highway 84. Uh, it's quite the statement, and we're really excited to be opening it this weekend. Um, it's a new bike and pedestrian bridge that's going to connect Bellhaven to the Bay Trail and the Bedwell Bayfront Park beyond. You want to go over um, there, Coco? Hi. You want to go over there? Did you have your treat? Sorry, Commissioner sorry, Baskin, I think your not mic is on. Oh, sorry about that. Um, so the architects that designed some of our buildings, Frank Geary, um, has also designed this bridge. Uh, they, they really wanted to bring the bridge to what they called a personal level uh, and pedestrian scale. So instead of one large bridge that might be similar to the standard um, you know, pedestrian overpasses that you see, they, they were breaking up the, the pieces of steel and, and making it a really interesting place to walk on. And we think that that's gonna really be reflected when, when everyone gets to experience that this weekend and beyond. Uh, it's a really incredible um, piece of architecture that I think highlights the uh, both the the industrial past of of Menlo Park and and the look towards the future as well. Um, we we're going to have viewing stations with binoculars in the future, as well as benches for people to sit and enjoy the the wonderful wildlife refuge, to look at the snowy plovers and all the migrating birds that nest in the salt flats during the winter. Um, and provide a really safe and easy way for the community to connect from Ch from Bellhaven to Choco Street, right across the freeway without having to fight against cars, against intersections, and it goes a nice ramp right down to the to the Bay Trail, and then you can walk right over to the Bedwell Park, or um, even you know bike across to Union City. Um, we think it's a really just incredible uh, bridge and a, a big statement, and I think everyone's going to be really excited to to walk and bike across it. Um, so the, the bridge is going to be open all the time. So if you're commuting somewhere or trying to travel, the, the bridge will be open 24 seven. Uh, the park itself is going to be open roughly sunrise to sunset. Um, there's a number of lights that we'll be able to turn on, um, during special evening events. Um, a few rules to, to keep in mind, like any park, um, <clears throat> no drones, no commercial photography, no fires, drug use, weapons. I think a lot of those things are pretty self-explanatory. Um, this isn't a, a park that's reservable for um, private events. It's a publicly accessible open space, but the community is welcome to come in every day. Um, it, it's meant for the community to be able to come in and enjoy it and, and walk around and really take in the nature and, and the beautiful um, kind of natural um, space that we've created. Um, and the, these rules will all be be set up there at the uh, at the entry to the park. But I think uh, everyone's going to really enjoy just being able to spend time there and really have that connection to the Bay Trail that we've really lacked here in Menlo Park for for a long time. Um, and then with that, I think we can turn it to a quick video um, that Ashley can share. Well, do you want to? You have a very great narrating voice as we walk through this, but as we all can. Sure, so, so this would be the entry coming off of Chilco Street. You can see the big plaza here with the bike path on the right and the big grass lawns on the left. There's benches for people to sit on and hang out. And then once you're done at the park, um, or if you're just continuing on, um, you can continue on to the pathway that goes onto the big yellow bridge. And that yellow bridge is gonna start sloping upwards at a you know, a, a nice angle that's meant for wheelchairs or bikes um, and kind of splitting between the the, the meta uh, office buildings. You can see it has really kind of interesting curves and you'll get a lot of really cool vantage points. Um, it goes across and you get really interesting views of, of the, the cars going back and forth. But then this is really, I think, the, the crown jewel of it, this area. Um, we'll eventually have benches and binoculars for people to look out at and really get an amazing view of the salt flats, um, which are really quite a special place. And then you can see that the ramp goes down and can, continues to travel westward, connecting to the Bay Trail that's been newly paved, um, and the, tr the trail continues out. So a really cool new feature to get us safely across a six-lane freeway where people are often driving 60, 70, 80 miles an hour. Um, 
And yeah, with that, I think uh, Ashley can talk about what's next. Yeah, thanks, Alan. So I hope you all are excited to come check out the space. Uh, we will have essentially what we're calling a soft opening, so officially opening um, the park and the bridge this Saturday. Um, we'll have an informal walkthrough, so I will be on site, and you are welcome to come and join us. And we're really looking forward to a much bigger and better uh, celebration with the whole community, um, hopefully in the springtime. So we will definitely come back or uh, for sure give you all the details um, when that happens. So with that, are there any questions? I just have a quick comment, if I may, through the chair. So I'll just go ahead and chime in and just uh, express uh, uh, gratitude to Solon and Ashley, uh, to Meta for, for putting this together. Um, you know, the pictures are, are, are really awesome and also very much just wanna express appreciation uh, for you to come and give this courtesy update to the Parks and Recreation Commission. So I think, I think the commission is the, is the first to really kind of see this, this presentation of this amazing new public space that, that you put together in our, in our community. So thank you for that. And that was just my comment. John. And also just a huge shout out to Sean and the city staff. You all have been amazing. And I know we go back and forth, but I uh, really wanted to get in alignment with the rules and regulations. So we really appreciate the collaboration. Yeah, thank you so much. That's a wonderful presentation, you know, and so much hard work, you know, has been put behind this. It's going to be a great conduit um, for people, you know, in Belhaven to, to access the, the Bayfront. Um, before uh, we kind of open this up for comments from the commissioners, um, Assistant Director Shegda, do we have any public comment on this item? Thank you, Chair Thomas. If any member of the public would like to comment on this presentation D1 on the new public uh, private space uh, and the bridge, uh, please use that raise hand function uh, at the bottom of your Zoom screen, or if you're dialing in, please press star nine now. Let's see one comment, and it's Marnie Carson. Marnie, you can go ahead and unmute yourself and address the commission. Uh, yeah, I'm just curious how easy it is to ride your bike across the bridge, whether you have to, is it walking or riding because of the corners that you have to go around for the bike? Sure, ha happy to answer that, Marnie. I've uh, I've ridden my bike across it a couple of times already. Um, the, the bridge is quite wide, actually. It's, uh, oh, okay. I don't know, 12 or 13 feet um, wide at almost all locations. And so... Uh, feel, feels very comfortable to, to ride across, doesn't um, doesn't need to get off and, and walk it. it. It's a quite wide and comfortable bridge. Thank you. Thank you for your question, Marnie. Does any other member of the comment, uh, public have a comment or a question on the presentation? Seeing none, back to you, Chair Thomas. Okay, great. Um, so fellow commissioners, if you, if you have a question, please raise your hand. Uh, maybe I'll start off with, with one I have. Um, so my understanding is that, you know, Facebook has been kind of a leader in sustainability and a lot of, uh, you know, Menlo Park residents um, really care about that aspect. So, and so, you know, I'm curious, like in this design, um, did that come into to, to play at all? Are there any like facets of sustainability that um, you would like to to share? Sure. Yeah. Great question. I think it um, speaks a lot to to the future of um, of our entire planet. Um, so, a couple things that we've done. Um, you'll see some areas where we have bio retention areas. Um, so that's a way where we treat the stormwater um, that's coming onto the site and make sure that it doesn't go and flood the streets. So there's some areas where we treat all the stormwater um, kind of floods into these basins and then trickles down through uh, through reeds and other types of plants that help to filter the water. Uh, so that's one way we kind of treat the, the stormwater. We've used a, a native plant palette, which I think is really important. You know, we're not planting um, 
we're not trying to plant a rainforest. We're trying to plant trees that uh, are used to this environment that don't need excessive amount of water to survive, um, that don't need, you know, different types of um, harsh chemicals or things like that. So you'll see a lot of oaks, a lot of grasses, and a lot of the, the native plants that are used to growing here in Menlo Park and in the Bay Area Hills. Um, we've, uh, as with all of our um, construction, we try to use concrete that has really um, high volumes of recycled con con uh, fly ash and sand and other things, um, and try to ensure that uh, all the construction is, is using sustainable materials. Um, this park itself is actually a lead platinum park um, along with the building that it's uh, built with. So um, following all the, the guidelines from lead um, in terms of planting and construction materials, um, disposal, those types of things. So definitely a, a green space in terms of, of how it's built and the materials that are used to, to plant it and support it. Sure, Thomas, if I may just ask a clarifying uh, of Solon, uh, could you just explain what LEED is a happening for? Sure. Um, so, uh, forgive me if I don't remember all the acronyms, but LEED is the um, accrediting agency that uh, essentially rates buildings across the United States on how sustainable they are. So how much energy they use, how much uh, embodied carbon they have to build them, how much um, the, the entire lifespan of the, the building itself um, and also sites like this. So this is accredited through lead sites rather than lead buildings, which people might be a little more familiar with. Thank you. It, it can be assumed that platinum is the highest level of certification, correct? Uh, for sites, yes, it is. Uh, you can get a lead net zero building, but again, this isn't a building and um, there's nothing in particular to be net zero against. Thank you. Awesome. It's exciting to, you know, that we get to live in a, in a community and kind of be a leader um, in, in this aspect. Are there any other questions from commissioners? Maybe, uh, sorry, I think I forgot one other thing, David. Um, sure. We also have a, a lot of educational signage um, around the park that kind of explains, um, we have one on climate change, explaining the kind of history of uh, climate migration, so how animals and plants have migrated, um, you know, over the last century uh, due to climate change and what we expect more. Uh, there will also be some uh, signs around the types of plant species, around the different types of oaks and where they come from, um, why they are living in these parts of the, the Bay Area. And uh, we're hoping to also install a large piece of public art um, sometime in the spring as well that will Kind of help build on that narrative around uh, the impacts of climate change. So trying to blend in a lot of different uh, both signage and the construction of the park itself uh, into that narrative. Yeah, this this all sounds great. Yeah, I'm looking forward to uh, attending the soft opening this weekend. So it looks like Commissioner Baskin has a question. Um, I just wanted to echo Sean's thoughts and express my gratitude um, to you all at, at Meta and um, for, for presenting and for, um, and for your work. I think I've been on the commission, this is my second term. And one of the things that we've always looked to do is to find better ways to engage in public private partnerships um, because we have so much industry, such great innovation and, and companies that are based in, in Menlo Park that um, you know, have done really well and can find ways to give back to our community in a way that is sustainable and inclusive and in this case also educational. So um, just expressing gratitude and, and we hope that we can continue to do more work like this in the future and super supportive of, of it. And, and please just um, any, you know, any feedback or any ways that we could help as a commission, we'd be happy to engage. So thanks very much. Commissioner Baskin. Awesome. Well, thank you so much again, Salon and Ashley, for, for presenting today. I think at this time, we'll move on to our regular business. Um, so the first uh, item here is to approve the minutes 
for the special meeting of the Parks and Recreation Commission of December 8th, 2021. So um, I guess I'll ask if a commissioner would like to make a motion to approve the minutes. Commissioner Baskin. I'll move to approve the minutes of the December Parks and Recreation Commission meeting. And Commissioner Diefenbrock, do you second that? Yeah, I'll second. Yeah. <clears throat> Wonderful. Okay, item two. Oh, wait, hang on. Sorry, Chair Thomas. I have to actually do the roll call vote. Um, so pardon me, those in attendance, we have to do a roll call vote of the uh, commissioners just in case there's anybody who is um, dialing in and can't see the results of the votes. So the, the motion is to approve the minutes from the December 8th special meeting of the Parks and Recreation Commission. Um, motion made by Commissioner Vice Chair Baskin and seconded by Diepenbrock. Um, Commissioner Joshua, how do you vote? I see a hand raised for approve. Uh, Commissioner Diepenbrock, how do you vote? Yes. Commissioner Bask, Vice Chair Baskin, how do you vote? Yes. And Chair Thomas, how do you vote? Yes. The motion passes unanimously. Thank you. Cool. So moving on to uh, the second item, reviewing uh, the field user groups for 2022. Recreation Supervisor Todd Zio will make a brief verbal presentation. David, I heard you emphasize the word brief there, so I know where you're going with this tonight. <laughs> um, I will be brief, um, although I will say that there are lots of new commissioners on here. Um, and so I'll just explain the process um, pretty quickly um, so that everybody knows kind of what we're doing here. So, so every year, basically, um, the Park and Rec Commission either approves, uh, conditionally approves, or denies approval for user groups that use the sports fields. And the user groups um, get the first rights to the field allocation uh, for the sports fields before we open them up to the public to rent the fields. So what we're doing tonight is we're looking at our local soccer groups, our local baseball groups, our local lacrosse groups, and they all um, are make up our user groups. So I can tell you that um, this started back in 2010, and we've had a, a number of groups over the years um, come in, and some have gone. Um, and in the report here, I, I've, um, I'm reading and, and, and was in your attachment, um, there are the um, criteria to become a user group um, and stay a user group. Um, and so I just wanna say that um, this year, um, we are losing one user group, Extreme Baseball. Uh, they are a, um, they were a, um, a uh, travel ball baseball team that was based in Menlo Park and, and had Menlo Park res residents on, on the team um, or in the organization. Um, beyond that, um, all of our other groups are returning and they're listed in the report. We don't have any new groups that have applied to become an, uh, an approved field user group this year. Um, that, makes what, that makes this um, much simpler. If we were to have new user groups, they would be here tonight to do a presentation and basically um, apply to be a user group for the year 2022. One other thing I should also say, and I worked this out with Nick, is we delayed this a month. We're already into the allocation process. We usually do this in December. Um, and if there were new users, I would have asked to do this in December, but it's but without any of the new user, without any new user groups applying. Um, it, it's all um, okay to do it um, in, in January. Um, so 
like I said, um, extreme baseball, not around anymore. They've ceased operations. Um, we have, and, and I, uh, I, we have eight other groups um, that are uh, participating um, as user groups. All of them are in good standing. All of them, except for one, uh, are Menlo Park resident groups. And that is um, the group that's not is the Menlo um, Atherton um, Adult Soccer League, and that's for women. Mazel. They they are more non-residents than residents. They've been around though for almost thirty years as a user group, um, and we get them the um, the field space that they need typically every year. Although they are on a lower level of priority than the resident uh, uh, user groups. Um, what our motto is and kind of what we've we've used the, our our our, our um, charge over the years is that all of the field user groups that are approved, they get a piece of the pie. And the pie is the all the sports fields in the city. Um, but they don't always get the, um, the exact piece of pie that they want. Um, so we, we uh, in the community services department are responsible for allocating them out the fields. And uh, we do that twice a year. And when there's conflicts arise where multiple groups want the same field, which happens every year, um, we we get together and we have allocation meetings and we out we we solve those conflicts basically by doing a lot of horse trading. Um, and at the end of the day, um, we have great relationships that I've built up over the last 12 years with the groups that um, allow us to. Um, not have to take the any disputes or conflicts outside of our allocation meetings. I know other cities have issues where they go to the commission, they go to the city council, and they don't like the amount of field space that they're getting. We've been great. We have great relationships with everybody. Um, we have a great process in place to do this um, with all the groups. And, um, and everybody, I, I, at least to my knowledge, is happy um, with, with the amount of field space. Um, in Menlo Park, the, two things, they could always use more field space um, and they could always, um, they're always, fields could be improved. And I'll talk a little bit about that at the end. But what, and we can pro probably uh, open it up for questions because this is a new process. But what we have done over the last 12 years is at this point, I am recommending that all the user groups to be approved. And I'm sorry, Extreme Baseball is on there, but they need to be taken out. Um, all the user groups, I am recommending that they be approved for the for calendar year 2022. Um, and it, at this point, typically, and Jennifer can attest, in the past, the commission has um, voted to um, approve all these groups. I mean, you could certainly deny them um, as well. Um, but I am recommending that everybody's in good standing and they all should be approved. And I think I'll... I, I have a few more things, but I can turn it back over to Nick now. Well, I'll, I'll actually turn it back over to, to uh, Chair Thomas to see if he wants to call for uh, public comment or if commissioners have any clarifying questions uh, for Todd before we turn it over to public comment. And then after public comment, we'll, we'll uh, have an opportunity to discuss as a commission. Sure. So with that prompting, do, do any commission members have questions for Todd? Uh, Commissioner Joshua. So I've got a couple of questions. The first question for Todd is, um, you know, you talk about the, the difference between the demand and the actual uh, availability. How do those numbers look? I mean, what is the capacity versus the request? You also made a comment that, you know, more is always better. Yeah, yeah. Good, good question. And I think the um, some during some years, I, I include the amount of hours that uh, users um, utilize the fields, and it's a very large number. I didn't include that this year or last year because of COVID, and it's not really accurate at this point. What I what I can tell you, kind of in a normal year, and 2022, based on our field allocation meeting, is shaping up to be a pretty normal year for all the user groups. They've got a lot of um, they got a lot of signups, a lot of registrations amongst their, their players. Um, I would say that weekdays 
between four o'clock and dark, whenever that may be, um, at what time of the year, during both the spring and the fall, our sports fields are 90% utilized um, by these groups. And at this point, the reason that 10%, I, I leave that 10% open is because of the condition of Willow Oaks outfield and the Law and Trotta sports fields at the Law and Trotta school. Um, those fields are not, uh, the, the user group, the user groups do not want to play um, games and to a lesser degree practice on those fields. Um, but 90% of the, the field space during the week, Monday through Friday is taken up. On the weekends, when typically games are played, um, I will say that 95 to 98% of the field space is utilized by all the organizations that are looking to play. They play mostly games on the weekend. Does that answer um, your question? Uh, yes, it did. Uh, next question has to do with the uh, left fields. How many fields are actually let um, for after dark? Uh, good, good question. So the fields that are lit are, are Neilon Park, um, which is um, typically a softball baseball park, but we've also practiced lacrosse on there. And so that field is lit. And obviously that's located in central Menlo. And then the other park that's lit is Kelly Park. And that's in Bell Haven. Okay. Uh, one last question. Um, in the priority, there's a list. There's a, a, a sort of the, the highest priority of the city-sponsored um, groups. Um, are any of the current or returning user group city-sponsored groups? Uh, no. What what that means? The highest priority city-sponsored group let, is if I had if in the let's say within the sports department, if we had a contracted um, soccer class. It used to be kids love soccer, although they've been kind of reeling from the um, um, reeling from the uh, pandemic. They would get first priority um, by our policy. Um, I can tell you that in the past we have had um, groups that have been at this high level of priority, and we we make it all work with the local youth and adult. Uh, sports groups as well. We, we we try not to freeze anybody out. Okay, thank you very much. You're welcome. Okay, uh, Assistant Director Shagda, do we have any public comment on this item? At this point, if any member of the public would like to make a comment on item E2, reviewing and recommending field user groups, please engage that raise hand function at the bottom of your Zoom screen, or if you're dialing in, uh, press star nine now. Looks like we have a couple. First one who pops up on my list is MJ Davey. MJ, go ahead, you can address the commission. Hi, can you hear me? Yes, we can. Uh, I just, I'm actually here for pickleball, but um, I just wanted to say that um, I've been a, was a user group for many years. And I think I came in or Todd came in either right around when lacrosse was new in Menlo Park. And uh, Todd's just amazing. I think the way he works with the users, his process that he started off with has been very consistent, very easy to follow. Um, I remember some former meetings where baseball didn't want this sport in or that sport, and, and Todd really came in and really made it a great uh, collaborative relationship with all the user groups that everybody usually walks away feeling, you know, maybe you didn't get everything you wanted, but you felt like you were dealt with fairly. So I really wanted to thank Todd for all the work that he does with user groups because it's really amazing what he's been able to do with so many kids in town and so many different sports and uh, welcome to new sport about I don't know, 10 or 12 years ago, lacrosse into Menlo Park, and it's been really great. So thanks. Thank you for your comment. Uh, next up, we have uh, Vern Leslie. Vern, you can go ahead and unmute yourself and address the commission. Thank you. Um, I would just like to know, is there a place maybe on the city website where I can go and see all the user groups and, and uh, and the fields allocated to them. Is there a place where we can get all that information? 
I think I might be able to field that. Um, so the field user groups uh, are listed in the staff report for this item we're discussing right now that is posted to the Parks and Recreation Commission webpage mm -hmm. um, for the meeting for today and, and was posted along with um, the public notification of this meeting. So, so that would be like the primary place to look at this batch that's being proposed and recommended tonight. Great, thank you. Thank you for your comments. Last call for public comment on item E2, review and recommend field user groups. And seeing none, back to you, Chair Thomas. Thank you. So, so Todd, yeah, thank you for, for managing this program. Um, it seems like you've been doing a, a great job and um especially it doesn't seem like there's a lot of conflict here since just one one group is is going away um so i guess do any other commissioners have questions about the field use see none um can we would anyone like to make a motion to approve the field use I would like to make a motion to approve the current uh, field user groups presented in Todd's presentation. I'll second that. I'll second that. Great. So the motion before the commission is to uh, uh, recommend the um, list of user group field user groups in the staff report. Uh, motion made by Commission Vice Chair Baskin and seconded by Commissioner Diepenbrock. Um, Commissioner Joshua, how do you vote? Yes. Uh, Commissioner Diepenbrock, how do you vote? Yes. Vice Chair Baskin, how do you vote? Yes. And Chair Thomas, how do you vote? Yes. The motion passes unanimously. Uh, Nick uh, and, and uh, Chair, may I have just a couple minutes to just talk about some of the uh, the field issues that I, I, I typically talk about every year? Sure. Sure. Okay. Thank you. Um, and I will be brief with this. Um, so it, it, some of you have come on since our Park and Rec Master Plan has um, was approved, but I just wanted to touch on one topic for there in terms of fields, the highest rated project for the master plan was uh, Burgess Park. Uh, and that included replacing the, the turf, the natural turf with artificial turf, adding lights and reconfiguring the baseball diamond for more flexible and efficient multi-sport overlays. Um, and, and that is um, uh, certainly uh, a project that all user groups would love. Um, because Burgess is centrally located. And I will tell you that it used to actually be worse just before the pandemic, but trying to get people to go even to Willow or Kelly being farther when folks are located central, centrally or um, on the west side of town is difficult. So, so improving Burgess, um, especially adding lights and a turf field, um, so the field never has to close. Our, our, they came out of the master plan, and, and, and again, it's just a, it's an important project with the user groups, and I talked with them about that at our meeting last week. Um, the sec and I'll be glad to answer questions about these too. The second one is, and, and, and uh, uh, Nick Shedd is aware of this too, we've talked about this, Kelly Park, the sports field uh, artificial turf is now at the end of its uh, lifespan. It's been in there for 10 years, and, and that is the recommended length of the, uh, of the sports field. Um, it's getting to be quite worn um, because it gets a lot of use for soccer. Um, and, and so that field um, will need to be looked at. And I know that that is on folks' radar as well, but I wanted to, to you know, talk to the commission about that too. And, and, the, and the third one is um, La Entrada and using the field at La Entrada there's been a lot of construction, as probably most commissioners know, at La Entrada over the years. We have a joint use agreement 
with uh, Las Lomitas School District. Um, our role is to maintain the field. Um, and in exchange for that, we get to use the field after school and on the weekends. Um, the field needs to be torn up and replaced, including all the irrigation. Um, and, the, and, and, and the city should needs to work with the school district to, um, to see that that happens if we're gonna continue to utilize that field. But it, I, I just as an example, 2012, 13, 14, that's, that field was every busy as Burgess Park. Um, and now it's not used at all, um, except for some random practices out there. Um, and I will say that the baseball field uh, is separate than that. The baseball field is in good shape. I'm talking about the main, um, the main field, which is split in half by a bunch of um, trees. Um, and, and, the, and, and, and I know that La Entrada is kind of working on a plan. And I think that we, the city should be involved in that plan as well to help that field get back to where it once was and really take care. It can take care of a large percentage of kids on the west side of town and they wouldn't have to drive towards central downtown or even um, uh, uh, to the east side of town during, uh, during rush hour traffic and parents would love that. Uh, last thing, uh, Willow Oaks um, is, is a concern as well. Little League Baseball is able to play out there because the baseball diamond and they don't they, is in good shape as well as they only use a small part of the outfield because they you play with their, their smaller kids over there. But we can't get um, soccer groups to practice or play games out there anymore. And so all of these fields that are you know restricted where teams don't want to play anymore, that puts pressure on other fields. And what they end up doing is having four teams practice on an area of a field or six teams practice where, it, where if these fields were be available, there'd be more field space available for all user groups and rental groups. So wanted to bring up Willow. And I know that there's starting to be a plan around Willow as well. Um, so that, that's good to see, um, but it's, it's, gonna be a, it's gonna continue to be an issue. Um, thank you. Thanks, Todd, very much for the for the presentation and for the updates on the fields. If the, if this is something that the commission would like to us to agendize so that we can um, discuss it or maybe pull together a presentation, um, let us know. Especially when we get to the part uh, of the agenda where we're talking about your agenda planning calendar. Um, also, um, uh, in our next item where we're talking about the commission's work plan. Uh, there, there is an item in that uh, proposed work plan that the commission uh, work to carry out the suggestions from the Parks and Rec Master Plan, and some of those field upgrades uh, that Todd was mentioning are in that Parks and Rec, Rec Master Plan. Sorry, uh, Chair Thomas, back to, back to you. Okay, great. So then maybe we can uh, save our discussion um, until we get to the planning part of this meeting. Um, so the next item... E3 is to review and recommend uh, the Parks and Recreation Commission. Hold on, I'm sorry, sorry to interrupt, uh, Chair Thomas. First of all, uh, Commissioner Joshua has a question, oh. but then we actually, oh, we did the vote already, didn't we? I'm sorry, I got confused. We did already, um, we did already vote to recommend the field user groups. Um, uh, Commissioner Tom, uh, Joshua has a question. Um, is, Todd, is Todd still available or is he? He's still there, yep. Yep, okay. yep. I'll be here. So, a so, um, couple of questions I have um, and, a, and a couple of comments. The, the Willow Oak, um, the, the, just the, the quality of the field itself is actually dangerous if you're trying to play any sort of competitive sport on it. There's a, there's a substantial chance of injury to anyone that's trying to run or do anything on it. So I don't even think it's, it's usable in its, its current condition. Um, I have a question on um, uh, the, the Kelly Park and the replacement of the artificial turf. Uh, what consideration is being given to the type of turf that's been used? Um, I know when you look back 10 years, you've got a lot of rubber in, in, the, in the old artificial turf, which is carcinogenic. Um, how has that been um, considered an implementation of, of, of new artificial turf? Yeah, no, we, we've had many, many, many discussions and meetings about the that rubber material, um, you know, since the fields went in in 2011. There, there was supposed to be some 
government studies uh, that came out with definitive answers about the, um, um, for lack of a better term, let's call it the healthiness of the of that rubber uh, material. They never did finalize any uh, uh, schedules or any of those reports. And I heard uh, anecdotally that that was because of Trump's or uh, a reduction in the EPA and the Environmental Protection Department with when Trump was president. So I haven't seen any updates lately on that. But what I can tell you is that uh, while the city is starting to, to plan, so the planning process has not kind of officially kicked off, I'll, I'll say. Uh, I know that Public Works is well aware of it. Um, Nick Shegda is well aware of it. And um, all cities are doing wonderful community, community engagement when they put in new artificial turf now. And there's a lot of different material that are being used. Rubber is not being used anymore, um, but there are a number of other materials that are, are being used that have a lot more, um, you know, environmentally friendly um, and, and, and don't have the question marks around uh, illnesses that the rubber um, uh, material had. Um, so I, I fully expect that when the Menlo Park um, starts planning for the field, that, that all those factors will be will be taken in and, and, and also some engagement being done with the community on the material. Okay. Yeah, yeah, thanks. Thanks, Todd. And I, and I would just add it, uh, excellent overview, Todd. I appreciate that. Just from a timing perspective, as you know, the Menlo Park Community Campus facility is currently under construction next to Kelly Park. And I think it's it's well understood that um, immediately after that that project is completed and the construction impacts are, are have kind of quieted down, that attention would then immediately turn to the to the turf and, and maybe possibly even the track and some of the other things around Kelly Park. Because uh, we want to make sure that we finish the construction first because there's, there's some impacts around the construction right now of the new facility um, and then and then turn to um, to addressing that field as well. So just, just to give you a sense of kind of the timing as we understand it in relation to that other project. Okay, if there are any further comments on this item. Hey, Dante, every dog has his lucky oh, uh, Todd, I think your mic is still on. I got him. Uh, we can move to um, item E3. And this is the last item before uh, the pickleball discussion. So um, in this item, we just wanted to quickly review the work plan and so for some context, uh, commissioners are tasked with creating a work plan annually. And once it's finished, presenting it to the city council for their review and approval. And um, this plan is scheduled to be reviewed by the council at their February 8th meeting. And originally um, commissioner Bryman and myself uh, worked on this and we got some feedback in, in a previous meeting. And so now we've just made a few corrections that I'd love to highlight. Uh, Assistant Director Shegda, can I screen share? Okay, great. Um, yeah, so um, kind of the same format. So we have these six goals and then six specific examples of them. And we've added two goals uh, to kind of in include, um, respond to some of the feedback. And so now, you know, we really focus on the 2019 Parks and, and Recreation Master Plan, and we also emphasize public awareness and engagement more. So um, I guess, do any other commissioners uh, have a comment or have any more feedback before we take this to a vote? I thought you guys, um did a really good job um, maintaining like our North Star and the, the ideals that we have and then placing some specific examples there that were very actionable and timely. So thank you. Thank you, Commissioner Baskin. Okay, um, at this time, would any commissioner like to make a motion to recommend the work plan uh, yeah, recommend the work plan. Oh, sorry, uh, 
Chair Thomas, for interrupting, but we should probably call for if, see if there's any public comment on this item before we take a vote. Uh, Assistant Director Shagda, um, do we have any public comment on this item? Any member of the public would like to comment on item E3, recommending the Parks and Recreation Commission work plan. Please use that raise hand function at the bottom of your Zoom screen or press star nine if you're dialing in now. Seeing no comment, back to you, Chair Thomas. Okay, maybe I will make a motion to uh, approve this work plan. Would anyone like to second that? I'll, I'll second that. Great motion uh, made by Chair Thomas, seconded by Vice Chair Baskin. Uh, to recommend the Parks and Recreation Commission work plan to the City Council. Uh, Commissioner Joshua, how do you vote? Yes. Uh, Commissioner Diepenbrock, how do you vote? Yes. Vice Chair Baskin, how do you vote? Yes. And Chair Thomas, how do you vote? Yes. The motion passes unanimously. Uh, uh, Chair, Mr. Chair, if I, if I may, just some next steps on this item. First of all, thank you for all the work you put in as a commission and as the committee working on it um, to get this put together. So uh, the next step, we have tentatively placed this on the city council's consent agenda calendar for February 8th, just to transmit it to them. Um, due to the, you know, the size of their agenda, um, we're looking to just sort of transmit it to them. And then if they have questions, they could ask, but without necessarily a presentation. But I did want to put that date um, out there for you that we're looking at uh, conveying this to the city council on February 8th. Okay, thank you, Director Reinhardt. So now we can move to uh, the pickleball, pickleball uh, pilot program. And um, Assistant Director Shegda, um, yeah, I guess once you make the presentation, would it be possible for you to inform the commission members how many members of the public are actually on this call so that we can sure. manage the, the discussion kind of accordingly? Sure. I can tell yeah. you that right now there are 67 members of the public in attendance. So, um, doing the math if everybody wants to speak. And I'm not sure that everyone will want to speak and, and offer public comment on the item. Um, but that's a that's a good, a sizable chunk of time if everyone takes their full three minutes. So- Could I, could I ask a clarifying question? Sure. Um, so in previous um, meetings where we've had a large number of um, attendees speak in public comment, there has been protocol before that we can limit public comment. Now, again, this is a very exciting topic and um, I, I'm extremely happy that we have many attendees at our meeting. So, and by no ways, I don't want to be able to not give people their time, but in the interest of us being able to discuss and move forward, agreed, if everyone took their full time, we'd be here easily another three hours. Um, cause we have more agenda items after this. So, um, if the commission felt, or maybe you could let us know what an appropriate sort of shorter time is because we have received, I know as a commission and, and I think Chair Thomas might even, um, might summarize some of these. We have received many um, supporting, e many emails in support of Pickleball. And I think we might be hearing a lot of similar comments. Um, but again, we wanna give the public the opportunity, but I also think we want to be able to carry on um, this evening. That, that's great. Uh, thank you, uh, Vice Chair Baskin. Um, it's my understanding that the chair can, uh, maybe uh, if I could suggest something, maybe we call for public comment, see how many people would like to give public comment, and then can make a decision on um, whether we want to um, limit the amount of time. And I would say maybe we, if there's mm, 20 people, maybe we limit it to two minutes per public comment. I'd, I'd, happy to entertain other suggestions. Thank you. That, that, that sounds great. Um, yeah, so that, that sounds great. So we can 
uh, assess that after your presentation. Okay, with that, I will get started. I don't have a, a fancy slideshow for you this evening. Um, thank you, Chair Thomas. Um, so uh, staff are bringing back uh, the pickleball pilot program. Uh, pickleball started um, uh, a pilot program um, like two years ago, I think, is when it first became before uh, the commission uh, with some community members who were interested in uh, who were playing pickleball in surrounding cities and looking for a place to play pickleball here in Menlo Park. Uh, started with a restriping of a tennis court for pickleball in Kelly Park. Uh, and then moved to uh, restriping tennis court number one in Milan Park um, for pickleball. And uh, just to give folks an idea of what this looks like, pardon me for a moment. I'll bring up a map of uh, Milan Park so you can sort of get an idea of where it is. Can everyone see my screen? So the th this court here, is court number one at Milan Park. Um, and it was selected because um, it was fenced off in a single court where the other courts at Milan Park are shared. Uh, and so staff uh, picked this court um, because it was easier to sort of uh, restripe just for pickleball. Um, because of the orientation of the striping of pickleball, you can see that. Um, there might be some conflicts between pickleball players and tennis players if we were to use one of the shared courts um, because of the, the width of the pickleball striping. And we were looking to avoid conflicts between um, pickleball players and tennis players. Um, uh, I'll stop sharing now, but uh, I'll point out that the pickleball striping is um, the, on the most proximate court to um, some of the um, apartment buildings here. Um, and while the uh, feedback on the pilot project and feedback from pickleball users in gen general has been overwhelmingly positive, we have received um, comment uh, from an apartment dweller who is complaining about the noise of the pickleball play, um, most often in the evenings, but it was a, was a noise complaint in general about the pickleball play. So because of the uh, uh, overwhelming number of positive responses and the lack of uh, any real problems with pickleball play at Milan Park, uh, staff are recommending that we make the um, pilot program there permanent, um, both at Milan and at Kelly. Um, right now, uh, we are not, um, there's free access to uh, the pickleball courts at Milan and Kelly. In other words, you don't have to purchase a tennis key like the tennis key users do. Um, that was a decision made during the pilot program. And uh, staff are also recommending that we extend that uh, key free access uh, through the end of this fiscal year. And that if the commission wants to take a look at um, charging a, a tennis key um, fee for the pickleball court users, that the commission can take that up again as part of the um, budget uh, discussions for the next year and the uh, changes that would have to be made to the master uh, fee schedule. Um, so that's my short presentation. Uh, Supervisor Zayo is here to help me out on any of the technical aspects of pickleball, which I have not picked up in my time um, sharing my, my work with the uh, the community services team and the and the sports teams. Um, happy to answer any clarifying questions uh, before we call for public comment. I actually have a, a clarifying question. So in terms of, of that noise complaint, is there anything we can do to mitigate that, for example, um, what would be the cost associated with moving the, the pickleball court maybe to a court that's more in the interior of the park so there wouldn't be as large of a noise disturbance? Would, would that be possible? Or um, are, are there any other strategies you're aware of to, to help us mitigate that? 
Well, the cost for restriping in nets is 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 nominal. I mean, it's about twenty three hundred dollars, I think, to to restripe courts. Um, it's just that that number one court, it, because it's self-contained, is really the most suited for pickleball um, at Nilon. Uh, if we if we did, we would have to do a little more work to make um, you know one of the other courts either divide it with some sort of net in between the courts, or use both courts, which would have a greater impact on the folks who wanted to play tennis at Nilon Park. Um, we really haven't looked into uh, sound mitigation uh, questions um, uh, because we didn't get a volume of complaints, just the one complaint. Um, there, there, we could explore it further if the commission directs us to do so. Um, yeah, I don't know if, if Todd or, or Sean, you have anything to add to that. Uh, Todd may have others to add. One other potential uh, mitigation measure, uh, my understanding is uh, part of the, the, the noise complaint that was received, you know, reference that the, the play and the noise would extend rather late into the evenings, um, you know, I believe till 10 p.m. So, um, you know, another potential mitigation, meaning, you know, to kind of reduce something would be to maybe reconsider those hours of operations so that the noise isn't extend quite so late into the evening. So I just wanted to mention that one as well. Yeah, I think we've covered it. Nothing, nothing else to add from my end. Okay, great. I'm sure we can discuss this further um, in the commissioner comment section, you know, after the, after the public comment. And so assistant director Shegda, uh, do we have any public comment on this item? Sure. So if any member of the public would like to address the commission on this item E4, um, approving the staff recommendations for the Pickleball pilot program, please engage that raise hand function at the bottom of your Zoom screen now. And if you are dialing into the meeting, uh, please press star nine now. And I'll pause for a moment to let everybody who wants to use that raise hand function do so. And then we have 21 uh, folks with their hands raised right now. So um, I don't know, Commissioner Thomas, if you want to have a discussion with the commissioners about limiting the, the amount of time for public comment on this item, individually, I mean, or if you wanna just start with three minutes each and see how it goes. <laughs> I would love to hear what the other commissioners think on this. Maybe just to throw something out there to, so that we could start to work with is, um, first of all, um, you, there our contact information is on the website. So if today, you know, if you're a lot of time, you don't feel like you know you got all your points across, you can al always contact us um, through kind of that offline channel as well. Um, and then maybe I would say like. 90 seconds per person for, for 20 people might be a reasonable starting point. Um, Commissioner Diepenbrock, do you have any thoughts? Uh, I mean, oh. just because people have three minutes doesn't they're gonna use all three minutes. And, you know, I, this, obviously this program, you know, has been in the works for, you know, a year and a half. And then all of a sudden, you know, the, the courts, were put in and then they were told it was gonna be three months. And now, so people have been waiting for, you know, over six months. So I think it's tough to, yeah, it's, it's you know, it's tough to limit them at this point. I mean, I understand it could be a, a lengthy meeting, but there have been people waiting for quite some time to be able to uh, voice their opinion on the subject. Commissioner Joshua, did you wanna uh -huh. add? I was just going to suggest two minutes, but I would agree. Let's leave it at three minutes right now. Let's see where it goes. I, I'm going to vote in support of um, Chair Thomas's 90 seconds. I, I do think people um, just from history take the time. There's time in between where we're calling on people. So it, it doesn't actually go if you think about it, like every three minutes is probably more like four or five in between people getting on and off and technical issues. Um, 
That's just my two cents. And I do want everyone to have a fair share of time. And I agree with Chair Thomas that there is um, other outlets to be able to access us. Um, and I do think a lot of the same points will, will be coming across. Um, so that's where my vote would be on it. What if we met in the middle? I guess like, you know, 90 seconds versus three minutes with two minutes and 15 seconds um, be yeah, that's enough. Fine. That's fine. Yeah, that's good. That's a good start. Okay. And then maybe before we get started, you know, I, I've received a lot of emails about this issue. So maybe I'll quickly summarize those just so perhaps people don't feel like they have to uh, repeat themselves. So you know, I've heard from Pierre, Allison, David, Katrina, Bjorn, Alicia, Nate, and Amy. Um, the highlights are uh, pickleball is a great way to meet people of all ages. This was actually highlighted multiple times. Oftentimes it's you know, people from, from um, you know, teenagers playing with kind of the, an, an old, older uh, players. It's very inclusive. Um, it seems to be like the, the fastest growing sport in, in America. The courts are often full. Um, and there's one, you know, one or two suggestions that you know, maybe having one court be a challenge court could be fun. Okay, so with that said, um, uh, Assistant Director Shegda, uh, do you want to start the public comment? I will do so. I'll ask everyone to, um, besides raising your hand on the Zoom, to, to ask to, to uh, be heard on this issue. Um, please state your name uh, uh, clearly and the jurisdiction in which you live. Uh, and I will start with uh, Neil. Neil, you are first up. You can go ahead and unmute yourself and address the commission. All right, yeah, my name is Neil King and I'm in, I live in Menlo Park, uh, Willows area. Uh, first, I'm super excited about the extension of the pickleball program, so thanks. Um, I do have a clarifying question and one request. Uh, the clarifying question is, it, you know, as part of the plan to make the nets permanent, uh, would we actually install permanent nets in the, instead of the temporary nets? Um, and just by comparison, the part, uh, the courts over at Mitchell Park and Palo Alto with the permanent nets are always the most crowded, uh, so that, that's a better uh, pickleball experience. So that's a question. Uh, and then just to wrap up my time, I'll also kind of, uh, I, I have a request and we have a bunch of people in the, the Willows neighborhood that would love to see uh, one of the tennis courts in Willow Oaks Park striped for pickleball. So uh, with that, I'll kind of yield my time back to, to the group. Thanks. Thank you for your comments. Next up is Doug Strauss. Doug, you can go ahead and unmute yourself, unmute yourself and address the commission. Hi there, this is Doug Strauss. I live at 1830 Santa Cruz Avenue. Is there any way to do a screen share of like a little presentation I did or no? Um, mm. I'm not sure if I can do that. Okay, I can send uh, it to the. Commission. You can send it to the send it to me or send it to the, and I can make sure that the whole commission gets it. Okay, sounds good. I'll kind of discuss um, the things. So I did a, a survey of all the people using the courts with a sign up sheet, and that was over most uh, a good couple of months. So like average per week, we had 194 users with a max of 278 users one week. Uh, one day we had 65 users using the courts for pickleball. And of all those users, 70% have been Menlo Park residents. Um, and the numbers of people are probably lower than what they actually are because there was a lot of people didn't actually sign up or include all the people within their group. Uh, the most popular time of day was in the mornings between starting at 10 to 10.30, where most pickleball players are playing for a couple of hours uh, on average. And uh, the next one was evenings at five to, and 6.30, people were starting to play more commonly. And then days of the week, um, people were much more interested in playing on like Fridays, but pretty much across the week, it was pretty popular for people using the courts. And, um, and there wasn't much of a, um, of a wait for people playing tennis before the uh, players started to play. And one thing I did notice while playing almost at least 60 to 70% of the time, maybe more, the tennis courts next to us have always been empty. 
while we're playing pickleball every, and I'm playing almost every single day in the mornings. Um, and of the people using the courts, about 53 people have used the courts 10 or more times. Um, and then we've also have um, a user list of about 100 people that are currently signed up to get notifications about the court and make discussions about it. Um, I definitely like to, I'm glad that we're making those courts permanent in Neyland Park. I think we need better nets because the nets are very, are already falling apart. We should have more permanent nets and probably moving the courts down to the larger court and getting more pickable courts would be great. Thanks for your time. Thank you very much for your comments. Our next speaker is Henry Carey. Henry, you can go ahead and unmute yourself and address the commission. Hi, I'm Henry Carey and I'm a fifth grader at Oak Mall and I live in Menlo Park. And I really like going after school and playing pickleball with my friends. And like on the weekends, I go and meet other people that I've never met before. And it's a really fun part of being in this community. So thank you. Thank you very much for your comment, Henry. Our next speaker is Allison Elliott. Allison, you can go ahead and unmute yourself and address the commission. Hi, thanks. Um, this is Allison Elliott. I live in Menlo Park. And I first of all, just want to thank the commissioners for going forward with the pilots at Kelly Park and Neilon Park. We really appreciate that. Um, and I also want to um, second Doug's request. So I play at Neilon Park often and um, particularly, well, no, this is morning and evenings. I observe the Pickleball courts are full and the tennis courts are not. So I'd like to encourage you to consider uh, giving over to one of the double tennis courts that would enable us to have, what, eight pickleball courts. And since pickleball is continuing to grow, I mean, every week I meet new people who are playing or taking it on. So you would be staying ahead of the curve if you looked into doing that. Thank you. Thank you for your comment, Allison. Our next uh, speaker is Jim Carson. Jim, you can go ahead and unmute yourself and address the commission. Uh, hello, everybody. Thank you first for doing the pilot program. I've kind of been involved from the beginning and it's been a tremendous kind of wildly beyond my expectations success. But to try to be brief, let's sort of look where to go from here. And I agree on a temporary basis that it would be wise to be able to use the two courts, giving us, therefore, eight pickleball courts. But we also really need to start on the permanent courts. And that, that's a bit of a task. I mean, we're going to have hurdles and growing pains and things to accomplish there. So I would like to recommend or offer maybe as a tip in Palo Alto, uh, Adam Howard is the recreation director for the city. Now, I'm not saying we want to be exactly like Palo Alto. It's like A's versus Giants. But um, I think he would be a good resource to contact uh, because he's gone through a lot of what we may be going through in trying to get permanent courts. And he's been advising some other cities. There's quite a few cities in the peninsula these days or in various stages of exactly what we're going through. So I would, would urge whoever is going to lead that charge to maybe get in touch with Adam to learn what we can learn from him. Uh, I was interested earlier when Jennifer, I think, said about uh, inclusivity in, in talking about the, the Meta Park. And if you want to look at anything that the city is doing recreationally that's more inclusive than pickleball, it would be hard to find. It just reaches so many different people on so many different levels. So I think other people are going to speak to the specific issues, and I won't repeat those. Again, thank you very much. 
Thank you very much for your comment, Jim. Our next speaker is Katrina. Katrina, you can go ahead and unmute yourself and address the commission. Hi, my name is Katrina. I actually live one block over from Newland Park. And I'll start by saying that I hope you'll consider expanding the number of courts as uh, others have already suggested. I also hope you'll give the pickleballers priority hours over tennis in that extends into the evenings as well. And I make these suggestions for two reasons. The first is that expanding pickleball aligns beautifully with one of your priorities, one of which talks about modifying and expanding facilities to meet developing community needs. Well, we know pickleball is a need. Doug covered that well earlier. Um, I also learned that in, pickle, in Palo Alto, their pickleball club had a 30% increase in membership uh, in last year alone. So this is a sport that's on the rise. And I think therefore we should expand facilities to meet that demand. The second reason I suggest expanding pickleball centers on the idea of community. I moved here a few years ago and hadn't really felt a strong connection to the community, but a few months ago, I bought a cheap little paddle and headed over to Neelon Park. Wasn't sure what I'd find there because I was going all by myself, but I walked onto the courts and was immediately invited in to play. And that's the beauty of pickleball over there is that it's mostly pickup games. So someone like myself can just walk up at any time and play. And I've been playing almost every single day since. My kids also love being able to pop over there and play anytime as well. So I'm incredibly grateful for the courts and I love that I now feel part of this town's community. So I'll just close by saying again that I'd really like to see a commitment from the commission to expand the number of courts and to support priority hours to pickleball for those courts. That's it, thanks so much. Thank you for your comment, Katrina. Our next speaker is uh, David Yoshida. David, you can go ahead and unmute yourself and address the commission. Okay, can you hear me? We can. All right, well, thank you. My name is uh, David Yoshida. We live in West Menlo and we've been uh, Menlo Park residents since 1975. I'm 81 years old. And when uh, the city uh, striped uh, the Neyland courts in August, my wife and I have been trying to play every day uh, at Neyland. Uh, we've got uh, to know many people, as they say, you meet as strangers and you part as friends. Uh, pickleball is a wonderful sport, very addictive. And um, thank you for uh, the commission for supporting the pickleball program. Uh, I'm in favor of permanent courts and maybe some expanded courts. Um, also, thank you to the maintenance crew. Uh, we've been at uh, the courts and there have been uh, lots of leaves in the fall and your maintenance people have come to clean the, the courts uh, on a regular basis and I really appreciate that. Also, we had a mechanical problem with the gate and it was on a Sunday. And I can't believe your maintenance people came out and responded to our request to open the gate. Thank you very much. Um, and there are a lot of other little things that have already been mentioned and I'm just in favor of uh, pickleball as a sport. Thank you very much. Thank you much. Thank you very much for your comment and uh, I'll pass along um, your, uh, your kudos to our uh, maintenance crew. I'm sure they will uh, appreciate that. Uh, our next speaker is uh, Pierre Sintra and Mariangela Smania. Um, Thank you. You can go ahead and address the commission. Thank you very much. So we live in the suburban park, Laurel Lane Manor, Flood Park Triangle neighborhood. Uh, I've been residents of Menlo Park for 11 years. I sent an email to all the commissioners and I got uh, replies from uh, Chair Thomas and Vice Chair Baskin. Thank you very much. And I just want to uh, add a couple of things. I mean, I want to second Doug, Allison's, Jim's, Katrina's request to provide permanent pickleball courts uh, sharing that with the tennis courts uh, is not ideal. 
And uh, I, you know, when, when I started playing, I went to uh, play with some friends in Foster City. The courts are always full and, you know, uh, people waiting and so on. Menlo Park in Palo Alto, the same thing. I didn't even know that Nilon Park existed. I was really happy to see that the Pirates was going on. And I've been playing there, you know, as often as I can. I work full time, so I can only play in the evenings and weekends. So that's why, you know, uh, having to share with tennis is not ideal. And I actually started with tennis. I tried to play tennis. Uh, I played tennis before and I tried to get back, got my keys. And whenever I went, it was pretty empty. Nobody playing. And the nice thing about pickleball is I, I started playing last year. I'm not a, a good player, but I can play and have fun. And that's how pickleball is good for anyone to play very quickly. You know, you may not master it, but you have a lot of fun and you meet a lot of nice people. And that's been my experience. So I just want to thank you for this pilot. And I want, you know, I just want to emphasize that it would be great if you could have permanent courts. Thank you. Thank you very much for your comments. I think we're gonna do a little uh, uh, sharing here. I'm gonna let Sean run the timer since I'm trying to take notes on the public commenters at the same time. Uh, our next uh, public commenter is Harvey Alcabez. I hope I pronounced your name correctly. Please correct me if I didn't, but you can address the commission now. Yeah, close enough. Um, I'm Harvey Alcabez. Alcabez. And I'm a Palo Alto resident, but I, uh, and I've been playing for a few years at Mitchell Park in Palo Alto. And with the culture of pickleball of people meeting new people, I met a couple of Menlo Park residents and play with them regularly. And so uh, when Nilan opened, they uh, asked me to come over and play with them in, in Menlo. Uh, and I, I have been, we've been playing at both places. And uh, in the, it, we often play at lunchtime on weekdays. And for example, this week we played twice at Nilan on the pickleball courts and the pickleball courts were quite full and next to us were tennis courts that were quite empty uh, or at least fairly empty. Uh, so I would certainly be supportive of uh, um, having two of the tennis courts converted to pickleball. Um, and uh, one comment, uh, somebody had earlier mentioned that uh, uh, the pickleball players in Palo Alto prefer the permanent courts to the temporary courts. And part of that is because when a court has both tennis lines and pickleball lines painted on it, it's confusing for everybody. And when you're in the middle of a game, it's, it's harder to see what the real lines are. And it's uh, much friendlier when the, uh, the courts are painted for one particular use. So thank you very much to Menlo Park for uh, joining, for inviting residents of other cities as Palo Alto has done uh, to play. And uh, thank you for continuing this program. Thank you very much for your comment. Our next commenter is Colleen. Colleen, you can unmute yourself and address the commission. Hello, commission. My name is Colleen Lavazetta, and I live in Redwood City. I'm joining this meeting to let you all know how important pickleball in Nilon Park has become to so many of us. As a retired person trying to stay healthy and social, I have found local pickleball op opportunities to be extremely limited. So when Nilon Park began to offer four courts on a regular basis, players flocked to it. I play there several times a week and I've met wonderful, welcoming folks who are happy to share our mutual passion for pickleball. Here's another thought. The proximity of Nilon Park to downtown Menlo is a huge benefit. Nearly every time I play, I stop at Trader Joe's or any of several other stores downtown to shop. So even though I'm from Redwood City, I'm contributing to Menlo Park. Pickleball is family friendly and kid friendly. Last week, I was fortunate to play with two fifth grade boys who came out to Nilon. I'm 73, I'm playing with two 11 year olds. How community building is that? 
So I want to say thank you for recognizing the value of this community building by offering the pickleball courts on a permanent basis. The demand is great now and will only grow. So better now to use the two pickleball court, two tennis courts in the middle to make them into permanent pickleball courts. And you'll be glad you did. Thank you very much. Thank you very much for your comment, Colleen. Our next commenter is Vern Leslie. Vern, you can go ahead and unmute yourself and address the commission. Great, thank you. Okay, we want to talk about um, diversion and inclusion, diversity and inclusion, right? Now, I know your commission is thinking about maybe implementing another key fee. A few years ago, I think it was two years ago, I used the public website to write a report and I suggested to the commission, whoever was um, uh, in play that, that year, that they open up the tennis courts. Because um, if I go to, um, on a Sunday morning, I take a walk down to Burgess Park and I run around playing pickup soccer. Why can I not do that on tennis? Why do I have to pay a key? Why do I have to go to uh, the library and use all the amenities at the library and not pay? Why do I have to pay? Okay, so I pay maybe a late fee when I, my books are late, but there's no charge there. Um, David, uh, I have to correct you. Uh, the leaves have been moved by me. I live across the road from Nilon Park. Alan is a guy that um, basically maintains the courts. I've actually been helping Alan because he's alone, right? There's no one else to help him. So I took it upon myself to take my blower out there and every piece of equipment that I have to move um, leaves and, and all sorts of things off those courts, all right? So um, I don't really think the city is uh, providing enough services as a matter of fact, and now you still wanna implement a key fee in the future, please keep it free for everybody. The reason why Kelly Park's usage is down is because you're implementing a key fee, okay? To the less, um, how I say, the underserved community, all right? We, we gotta get rid of that, guys. If you want to talk diversity and inclusion, get rid of the fees, welcome everybody to the public spaces, all right? Thank you. Thank you very much for your comments. Our next commenter is Ashley Callahan. Ashley, you can go ahead and unmute yourself and address the commission. Thank you so much um, for giving us all this opportunity to share. I um, live with my family, um, our family of five, across the street from Nilan Park. And um, we have absolutely adored having those the pickleball courts there. We um, find it to be very community building, family friendly, inclusive. In fact, our 11 year old daughter's birthday is on Halloween and my, my 70 year old parents were up visiting and they wanted to play pickleball and she wanted to play pickleball. So we wandered over the courts, which were absolutely packed. And we were all invited onto the court. Our 11 year old daughter was welcome to play with all sorts of ages and stages and strangers to be partners. People were so generous and kind with her. And she goes over after school. She plays with Henry, the other 11 year old talking earlier. Um, we play as couples. I play every Friday morning with a group of moms that um, mostly had never played before. And I think in this era of COVID, we just are desperate for some fun, safe ways to connect, make new friends. Um, I'm amazed at how many of these voices I'm like, oh, I met you playing pickleball. And that that just wouldn't happen um, and hasn't been happening in this era. And um, so thank you for this uh, chance to share. And um, I absolutely agree with keeping the courts permanent um, and sure, expand them as well, because why not? It's so fun and it's so great for all of us. And it um, is good for our mental health as well as our souls. So thank you. Thank you very much for your comment, Ashley. 
Our next commenter is Monty Frost. Monty, you can go ahead and unmute yourself and address the commission. Uh, hello, commission. I want to thank you very much for uh, making the possibility of this uh, trial period. Uh, I'm a Palo Alto resident and my grandchildren live in Menlo Park. And uh, I'll just briefly say that I kind of represent uh, two of the extremes in terms of ages there. I'm not the oldest, but uh, I'm 77 years old and I've been playing over there uh, and enjoying it tremendously by myself, being welcomed by the folks there very much. And also I've very much enjoyed the opportunity to teach my grandchildren who are nine years old, uh, twins, how to play pickleball and they absolutely love it. So I'll yield the rest of my time to others. Thank you. Thank you very much for your comment, Monty. Our next commenter is Monica Williams. Monica, you can go ahead and unmute yourself and address the commission. Can you hear me? We can. Thank you. Good evening, Chair Thomas and commissioners. I'm Monica Williams, president of the Palo Alto Pickleball Club and local ambassador for the USA Pickleball Association. Pickleball brings a community get together like no other sport. It's a wonderful team building activity and the Los Altos recreation staff and Palo Alto community services, including the fire chief and the city manager have all taken advantage of this opportunity with our volunteers who love to share the joy of pickleball. We would like to invite all of you to the courts at Neelan to participate in a team building session or just to learn to play anytime at your convenience. Also, please consider adding more pickleball courts by moving them to the larger courts and making them permanent. So that's, I will stop right there. Thank you all for your service to the community. We really appreciate you being involved with pickleball and supporting it. Thank you. Thank you very much for your comment, Monica. Our next commenter is Gloria Taffy. Gloria, you can unmute yourself and address the commission. Um, actually, I didn't know you were going to call on me, but um, I just um, I broke my hip um, a while back and. Um, I just wanted to say that pickleball has given me um, such a mind, body, spirit boost. It's just been awesome. And I just want to support uh, pickleball in Menlo Park. I live in the Willows and I would love to have a court near me. Um, but, um, you know, I'm great to start with Neelan and I love playing over there. And I just, I'm just so encouraged that um, people of all ages can play and it isn't easy to find um, friendships and build the bonds as many people have already said tonight. So I just encourage more courts and it's really a mind, body, spirit builder. You know, no matter, you know, who you are, it is just the best feeling when you leave especially when you know older people have had injuries for different things in life and pickleball can just bring you back to um, a high standing. So thank you. Whoops, I was muted. Thank you very much for your comment, Gloria. Our next speaker is Mary. Mary, you can go ahead and unmute yourself and address the commission. Hi, my name is Lorenzo and I'm a sixth grader at Hillview. I started playing pickleball with my mom at Mitchell Park a few months before the pandemic started. When the pandemic started and everything shut down, we played a mini version of the game in our backyard. Sometimes we would also chalk lines and bring our net to Upper Laurel's blacktop to play. When my mom told me pickleball courts opened at Neelong last year, I was really excited. I like to play pickleball because it's fun and I get to play a sport with my mom since she can't play soccer with me. 
We also got my dad and my little brother to play pickleball with us a few times, and it's nice that all of four of us can do a sport together. Thank you. Thank you very much for your comment, Lorenzo. I'm sorry I called you Mary. I'm just wearing, working from the names that are there on the, on the Zoom screen. Our next commenter is Bjorn Kerry. Bjorn, you can go ahead and unmute yourself and address the commission. Thanks. Uh, quick shout out to David Yoshida. I didn't realize you're 81. He's, he's smoked some forehands past me lately. He's been <laughs> really good. Um, I just want to add a, an, another wave to the like the swelling tide of support for pickleball at Nilon. Um, I was over there at lunch today. All four courts were completely jammed. We had a line waiting. Um, tennis courts, uh, I, you know, whatever the two courts are and kind of like left center field over the fence, those were those were open. I would love to see um, us be able to expand the permanent pickleball structure into, into some more of the courts here. Um, it's one of the best things going on in Menlo Park right now. And um, there's just tons of room for growth of the sport. It's so easy to drop in. People of all ages and abilities and skill levels are, are, are out there playing. Um, I've met people I've never even seen before. It's, it's been really cool. It's a welcoming community. It's, it's like going to cheers, but to play pickleball. So uh, I, I yield the rest of my time. Thank you so much. Thank you very much for your comment. Our next commenter is Sophie Ultan. Sophie, you can go ahead and unmute yourself and address the commission. Hi, this is actually Jill Oltan. I have my daughter's Zoom going. So um, I live in Menlo Park in the Willows area and just want to echo what everyone is saying that pickleball is just such a wonderful sport. I've made so many new friends and I just really love getting outside and, and being able to get a pickup game um, or meet up with friends who are um, uh, playing, you know, at the at the same park. I've been going to Mitchell Park pretty regularly, um, and I will just echo that the dedicated permanent courts are such a pleasure to play on. Um, not only because you don't have the issue with the lines, but also because there are dividers that you can put up that help prevent balls from crossing over into the your court. So it, it cuts down on some of those interruptions of play. Um, and then I also just wanted to say, because I do live in the Willows, I would love to see some courts in the Willow Oaks Park too. So thank you very much, appreciate it. Thank you very much for your comment, Sophie. Oh, I'm sorry, Jill. Our next commenter is Brian Kissel. Uh, Brian. Oh, it says, uh, I'm gonna have to do a little uh, shenanigans here with Zoom, Brian, to allow you to talk, but um, you can go ahead and talk and address the commission now. You're on mute, Brian. Sorry about that, thank you. No worries. Um, I just wanna um, reinforce what others have said. I highly recommend uh, supporting the, the expansion to two courts and making them permanent. Um, I'm new to Pickleball, I live in West Menlo Park. I think it's a tremendous community building opportunity. Uh, and uh, as others have said, a lot of the tennis courts go unused this is a wonderful opportunity for Menlo Park to come together. And I hope that the commission uh, supports the recommendations uh, from the community. Thank you. Thank you very much for your comment, Brian. Our next commenter is Sandy Backman. Sandy, you can go ahead and unmute and address the commission. Yes, hi. Um, my name is Sandy Backman. I actually live in Foster City, where I play pretty regularly. Um, and I was introduced to Neilon um, by my friend Joe McDonald. Um, and now I go there a lot by myself. It's, it's just a, a tremendous community. Um, I've got to know 
so many people there. Um, I just feel so welcome. Um, in Foster City, they have six permanent courts and they have two tennis courts right next to it. The tennis courts are probably 95% of the time empty. Well, the pickleball courts can have as many as 30 people waiting. So it just shows how popular pickleball is. Um, community, it's it, like I said before, it, it really brings a community together. You can get, what other sport can you go by yourself, no matter what time it is and meet people and play a competitive fun game with people maybe perhaps you've never met before. Um, I, would, I would highly recommend going to the eight courts because Foster City made a mistake not using the larger um, tennis courts. And I think they're probably gonna end up having to convert those two because of the weight and the lack of people um, wanting to play tennis. Um, putting it in the middle would, would keep it away from the apartments. So I think the noise level would go down for the apartments. Um, and another thing is I have a neurologic disorder and I um, pickleball is great for people who have disabilities as myself. Um, it, it has enabled me to play a sport that I thought I would never be able to do with my problem. So um, I would highly recommend it to um, everybody, especially people who are injured because it really does help. Um, and finally, um, on my way home from Foster City a few weeks ago, I stopped by Mike's camera in uh, Menlo Park and I'm a professional photographer and um, I purchased a very expensive camera um, over there. So it brings business also to Menlo Park. Thank you very much. Thanks very much for your comment, Sandy. Our next commenter is Catherine A. Catherine? You can go ahead and unmute yourself and address the commission. Thank you very much. This is actually Olga. Um, Catherine is my daughter. Um, we live bordering Newland Park, so we actually learned about pickleball by hearing some of the noise. Um, and I wanted to say that noise actually was kind of a curiosity to get us out there. It's usually only a problem or not really a problem at all, but usually we hear it in the morning. And I, I do want to say that it's actually surprisingly very, very quiet right now, because I think all the pickleballers are on this call, um, you know, for um, keeping the courts. And I do want to say that um, we were welcomed uh, the first time we went out there, we were welcomed by Hiroshi and her husband, who I spoke today. We had a one month old that we took out in the stroller and my eight year old daughter at the time. And we all had, you know, a wonderful introduction to the community. So having, you know, everyone from one month old to 80 plus years old just was an incredible community building, um, you know, feeling. And I think it very much outweighs any issues with noise or other things that may have been brought up. Um, I also wanted to address the key issue. Um, we have had keys to the tennis courts for quite some time. Um, and I do think it's, you know, it's different uh, where you have 20 or 30 people at the courts and there's a really large um, turnaround. So I think it's going to be really hard to maintain. Um, and I would advocate of having that um, area kind of free to the community. I also wanted to thank the library system at Mella Park um, because that's how we actually still um, use some of the paddle boards that we're able to rent out from the library. And so that um, provided, I think they had two sets initially when my daughter and I tried and now they're up to eight or maybe more. So that's um, really helpful. And I wish more people knew about um, being able to get that from the library. So again, to kind of summarize, I, I really advocate for having a permanent installation of the courts, potentially expansion. Um, and a no key fee. And I really appreciate um, all the people that I have met and welcomed um, and the opportunity to have this as a trial period, hopefully into a more permanent one into the future. Thanks so much. Thank you very much for your comment. Our next commenter is JD Tapp or Tappy. Please let me know if I mispronounced your name. You can go ahead and unmute yourself and address the commission. Hi there. Um, so you mentioned, Dr. Nick, that um, pickleball is permanent now, and I just want to know, does that mean that we have priority all day? Also, um, you said you're not familiar with pickleball, and I just want to let you know that the difference between a permanent net and a, uh, a uh, temporary net is night and day. So I'm also advocating for permanent, permanent um, nets and also the two, the two courts, the two tennis courts. 
because they're farther away from the apartments and uh, less noise. And staying till 10. Uh, 10 o'clock is not that late. And if we have those two courts far away, it won't be as loud. Also, um, nobody has mentioned tennis, our relationship with tennis. And you'll notice there's nobody from tennis arguing against us. And that's because we have a beautiful relationship with tennis. They show up, we hand them pickleball paddles and they come play with us. So it hasn't been like in Palo Alto, there was a problem. People would show up to the meetings and they would argue against a pickleball um, and they don't do that. So everything that Katrina said and that's all. I'm out. Thank you very much for your comment and for uh, misidentifying me as a doctor. I'm not a doctor, so. Oh, sorry. <laughs> that's okay, I'll take it. All right, our next commenter is Hiroko. Hiroko, you can um, unmute yourself and address the commission. There you go. I'm Hiroko Yoshida, I live in Menlo Park, and I play almost every day over at Milan with my husband, David. And uh, the issue would be, we've been asking for um, another gate at the back of the pickleball courts. Um, mm -hmm. It will make it so if we have more room as well, and we'll be near garbage cans uh, the, uh, and the water. drinking water, and, and, and there's a bench there, and people can even wait there. Um, the courts get very crowded, and sometimes people will be standing waiting, and they're near the court where people are playing. So if that would be possible, to put another gate in the back of Neyland uh, Pickleball Court, it would be greatly appreciated. Thank you very much. Thank you very much for your comment. Our next commenter is Tito Poza. Tito, you can go ahead and unmute yourself and address the commission. Are you there, Tito? We can't hear you. Are you there, Tito? Last call. All right. Tito, I'm going to lower your hand, but if you come back on and you want to make a comment, go ahead and raise your hand again so I know you're there. Uh, the next commenter is Janet Hafner. Janet, you can go ahead and unmute yourself and address the commission. Hi, can you hear me? You I can. Hope. Okay, great. I am a former tennis player. Well, actually, I still play tennis. And I just want to say that pickleball is winning me over big time. And the great thing about pickleball, as everyone has stated, is that you don't have to organize a time, you just show up, there's always friendly people and competitive people. And we have had so much fun. I bring my 19 year old son, my older sister, I'm not allowed to tell how old she is. And we all have just so much fun and I would love to see the courts made permanent and have more of them. Thank you. Thanks very much for your comment, Janet. I have uh, Linda Itzkovitz, and then I don't have any more commenters. So if anyone would like to make a comment, please use that raise hand function on the Zoom screen or star nine if you're dialing in. Linda, you can go ahead and unmute yourself and address the commission. Hi, I'm Linda from Sharon Heights, and I've been playing pickleball since October with Brian and a number of other friends. Um, what I love so much about pickleball is it brings together a community and friendships. I've actually met more new friends in the past few months than I've met in my over 20 years in Menlo Park through pickleball. And when I hear people like David and Hiroko and Doug and Colleen speaking, I mean, these are all people I've met through pickleball who are neighbors of mine. And it's just been a really fun, welcoming community. And I would love if we would have eight pickleball courts 
um, so that we can spread out because it's crowded and we're often waiting <laughs> a long time to get courts, but it is really a way to bring together our community like nothing else. And that's why I love pickleball here. Thank you. Thank you for your comment, Linda. The next speaker is Chris Kundinger. Chris, you can go ahead and unmute yourself and address the commission. All right, thank you. Um, yep, my name is Chris Kundinger. Um, I live in Menlo Park in the Willows. Um, I wanna thank you guys for your service. Um, and I wanna say that, you know, when COVID started, we uh, chalked out a, a pickleball court on, a, on our street and we had the entire street. We live a block from the Willows and we had the entire street playing like at least a dozen people. Um, and so now a few of us who got really into it and when the rain washed away our court, we have gone to Mitchell Court and having the permanent courts are really, really nice. And so I'd just like to put in a, an extra vote to have the Willow courts have permanent courts. Um, and yeah, that's it. And thank you again for everything. Thanks very much for your comment, Chris. Next up is Andrea Lynn. Andrea, you can unmute yourself and address the commission. Thank you so much. I visit from Foster City and come down and play with my sister, my 19 year old nephew. I've played with Henry who spoke earlier. I played with Hiroki and, and Dave and everybody there is unbelievably welcoming. It's so much fun. And you guys have a wonderful group there. And I strongly encourage you to extend uh, the number of courts and make them permanent. It's been a just a treat to play down there. Thank you. Thanks very much for your comments. Next up is Adam Geller. Adam, you can go ahead and unmute yourself and address the commission. Great, thank you. I will uh, just echo a number of the comments. I happen to be um, Adam Geller. I'm in the Willows, uh, Menlo Park resident. Um, I am one of those people who plays with Chris on, on that makeshift court and then moved over to playing at uh, Mitchell Park, which has been fantastic on their permanent courts and only recently started heading over to uh, Neyland. Um, would echo everyone's comments about the, the benefits overall of the game uh, and the enjoyment again of meeting and playing with lots of different people uh, for sure. Um, um, but would also comment permanent courts make a world of a difference um, and uh, certainly the number of courts would help. Um, and uh, as, as a few people mentioned, Willow Oaks Park here, I do look at it, see the tennis courts there, uh, would be a great place to extend pickleball in Menlo Park uh, to add more capacity and not just do the capacity only at uh, Neelan Park. So thank you again for, uh, for taking the, uh, the comments here and uh, have a good rest of the night. Thank you very much for your comments. Pardon me a moment while I scribble furiously. Uh, if there's anyone who hasn't already made a comment who would like to make a comment, please use that raise hand function on the bottom of your Zoom screen. And I have John Rick. John, you can go ahead and unmute yourself and address the commission. Thank you very much. <clears throat> I really appreciate having the courts at Neyland. I am a Menlo Park resident in the Willows District for 40 plus years and had been playing um, in Palo Alto at Mitchell. At one point in our little cul-de-sac in the Willows, I was contemplating laying out a pickleball, a pickleball court. And I did write the um, some part of the Menlo Park city government to ask what it would take to get permission to actually uh, paint lines, pickleball lines on our cul-de-sac. I did not get an answer and I can easily understand that people are busy, but it really emphasizes from what I'm hearing that other people are also um, going, taking the thing into their own hands a little bit and chalking in some lines. This is, is sort of grassroots and it's a wonderful game. I've convalesced through two different injuries with the aid of pickleball. Um, 
<clears throat> and it's really proved to be a, a great therapy and just a wonderful human experience. So thanks so much for setting up these courts at Neelan. And I also would encourage you to find ways to expand um, at Neelan and in other places, if at all possible. Thanks so much. Thank you very much for your comment. Is there anyone else who would like to make a public comment who has not already commented? Chair Thomas, I'm not seeing any more public comments from those who have not already commented. Okay, wow. So many wonderful stories. Um, you know, so touching. And uh, yeah, just wow, there's so much positive sen sentiment behind this, you know. Um, you know, now I think, you know, maybe the right conversation to have isn't, you know, about permanent courts, but, you know, how can we expand and, you know, maybe we'll take the, the um, you know, some of the fields we were talking about earlier and turn them into, into pickleball courts after, after this conversation. So uh, I'd love to hear what the other uh, commissioners have to say. I guess, um, to, to summarize, like my thinking, um, yeah, I think there's a ton of positive sentiment all the way around. Um, I think there's a question of, you know, whether we can make it permanent, whether we can expand to eight courts at Nilon, or if we'd want to prioritize introducing a court at Willow Oaks and whether that'd be in scope with the park improvements, I think planned this year for over there. Um, so yeah, I'll just throw those questions out there and kick off the conversation. Well, can we just start, um, David, maybe, start with just one, you know, yes, there were a lot of speakers, but there weren't, you know, that many different suggestions. I mean, there's maybe three or four things that were consistently brought up. Can we just list, you know, those three or four? I mean, to me, just from what I took away, one was, you know, just to start with evening priority hours um, was one going to the double tennis courts at Nilon, two, putting some lines at Willow, three, and then the, uh, the idea of putting in permanent pickleball courts, four. I mean, th that seemed to summarize most of the speakers, unless I'm, unless I'm missing something. Thank you, Commissioner Diebenbrock. I, I love the suggestion. Um, yeah, does anyone else have anything they'd want to add to that list? Maybe Commissioner Joshua? Yeah, I think the first thing we should do is to approve um, or um, consent to the um, uh, staff recommendation that we um, make the program permanent. And then we can talk about expanding it beyond that. Because I think that's, that's, that's the item that's on the agenda right now. So let's go past that and then, uh, then discuss um, uh, uh, making the program uh, a lot larger. Okay. Um, yeah, that's great. So I guess we can just start with approving. I'm happy to make uh, um, forward a, a motion to uh, approve the stack re recommendation. Do, does any other commissioner want to second that? I'll second it. Great. Sorry for uh, for pausing there. Um, <laughs> so uh, the motion is to uh, made by Chair Thomas and seconded by Vice Chair Baskin to um, recommend um, the staff recommendation to uh, make the pickleball pilot program programs at uh, Neilon and uh, Kelly Parks uh, permanent. Uh, Commissioner Joshua, how do you vote? I, yes. Uh, Vice Chair Baskin, how do you vote? Yes. Commissioner Diepenbrock, how do you vote? Yes. And Chair Thomas, how do you vote? Yes. The motion passes unanimously. Okay, and then I guess now that that's out of the way, um, you know, a lot of, uh, like Commissioner Diepenbrock said, a lot of things were brought up, and maybe you want, you know, some 
to have some time to just discuss a few of them. And uh, Commissioner Diepenbrock, um, I believe you had a list of four things. So even evening priority hours, double yeah. courts at Elon, permanent court, rid of four permanent courts, uh, Willow. courts Willow. at Willow. Yeah. I guess that's three things then. I got, no. um, I'm sorry. I got uh, expand the priority hours through the evening because right now I, I believe they stop in the mid afternoon. I think it's eight to three is the priority for uh, pickleball at Milan. So expand into the evening hours, the priority. Um, move to double courts at Milan. So one of the two interior, more interior courts at Milan, which would expand the number of pickleball courts uh, and move them further away from the apartment buildings. Um, a pilot program at Willow Oaks Park, and then uh, make the striping permanent so that they're not uh, striped shared courts. Is that correct? Yes. And I'd love to hear the other commissioners' thoughts on these. I imagine there's a lot of cons you know consensus that like most of these um, would be good things to pursue. So I'd also love to hear. Um, you know, what the challenges would be, I guess, in, in moving forward with some of these um, you know, from the staff. Can I ask what, what would be the difficulty of having the pilot program extended to Willow Oaks, where you use the two outside courts for pickleball and the two inside courts for tennis? Uh, 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 let's let Todd right. weigh in on that. I don't think we're going to say the same thing. Go ahead, Todd. Yeah, no, just a couple of things. And, and like I said, I'm not, uh, I'm not, uh, Give weighing in on judgment, just given the challenges. So <clears throat> overall on all the city courts, there is what we have called a 50% rule as part of, our, part of our policy on all the courts. So it's, it's an official policy and it basically says we will not reserve any more than 50% of the courts at a given time on any of the, uh, on any of the courts. So at Willow specifically, we have a uh, tennis contract instructor, Euro Tennis, which runs a variety of classes for children um, on uh, one or sometimes two of the courts, depending on how big their classes are. And, and so I, what I see is a, is a going over that 50% rule. The other thing that Willow is popular with um, reservations so there's a lot of reservations at Willow Oaks, especially like in the four to nine o'clock hour. Um, again, all of this adds up to not enough courts available to meet the policy. And I will just generally say that I think when we did the survey, Sean, Willow is like the second busiest court for tennis already. So just throwing those things out there. Yes, thank you, Todd, and, and agree. No judgment on the on the merit of the proposal whatsoever. Just kind of uh, enumerating what some of the challenges and process would entail. Um, in addition to what, what Todd mentioned about you know the fifty percent rule and whatnot, uh, I, I would just add that the uh, Willow Oaks Park um, is part of the Parks and Recreation Facilities Master Plan for a number of improvements. And uh, the commission, I believe you're aware, and it's on the agenda later, when you look at your agenda calendar, that the Public Works Department will be coming uh, to the commission, I believe next month, uh, February 23rd, if I'm not mistaken, uh, to present the details of the Willow Oaks uh, Park renovation plan. It really is focused on the dog park, some new restrooms, and um, the playground. However, uh, that would be a good, good opportunity to discuss you know, what could potentially be done uh, with the folks who would, who would be doing the work, which is our public works department. So I just wanted to put that date out there. Um, and it's, it's coming up next month. So, so Sean, are you saying that next month, that would be a time to discuss the possibility of pickleball at Willow or, or what exactly is that? What are you saying? I, it would certainly be a, appropriate because the conversation would be about the plan to make some renovations to Willow Oaks Park. Um, now I'll be, you know, be upfront that up until this point, there had been uh, really discussion as part of the planning for renovations at Willow Oaks, but it's a topic that's going to be under discussion with our public works department here. Um, so it would seem to be an opportune moment to, to dive in a little more to what, what some of the challenges and process might be. 
um, related to just the, the physical work that it would entail. I think there would also be these other um, considerations that Todd brought up about you know, our existing policy for reservations and the popularity of that particular location. Um, and just from a more macro level, I think this would apply to all the courts is, um, although we previously did send out a survey to tennis key holders um, as part of identifying which courts in town are least used by tennis and therefore doing the pilot pickleball program would be least impactful. Uh, we did not uh, conduct a full survey of tennis users or, or, or the community about um, you know, the, the potential impacts of, of, of pickleball or the availability of courts and the preferences of tennis players. We really just sort of asked them, what is their current usage level and at what locations? Because it was a, a fast way to just identify how, how much or how little the courts were used. So I think in all fairness, you know, we would need to do that as part of the process because additional courts uh, beyond the ones that pickleball courts that is, beyond the ones that are currently there, um, we would wanna just advise tennis users uh, of that possibility and, and, and invite their feedback in a proactive way so that they could be part of the conversation too. I see. Um, question, can staff prepare a report on the possibility of converting at least one of the courts at Willow Oaks to dual usage? You know, you know anything, anything's possible. I think it's just a question of what, what would it entail? So I, I do think um, you know, this is something we'll, we'll give, because it did come up. We heard a number of folks who like live in the Willows and, and suggested that location specifically yeah. So we'll give our public works folks a heads up that you know uh, that the commission you know was interested in, in discussing that in the context of next month's conversation about the renovations at Willow Oaks. I, 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 that's the path I would recommend uh, because we'll have you know the key uh, staff folks in the room uh, to kind of hear that discussion. Okay, thank you. Um, I have a couple comments on maybe moving forward from um, what we've heard here tonight. I think um, in the spirit of us, um, uh, some of some previous commissioners have always talked about, you know, being, being able to action things. And I think we've got some wins in our sails here with this program. We've got some great comments, um, some great feedback and great usage of this pilot program. So to me, this sounds like a success and it's how can we continue to make this success in, a, in an efficient way. Um, so I, I like, Sean, some of the things you've mentioned. And I think um, when we're gonna focus, focusing on some of the feedback around what we're doing at Milan Park currently, um, I think where we're talking about um, expansion and permanence should probably be something we take together. So we're not say making it permanent in the single court area, but yet we want another court and we only have two other double courts there. So I think the thought around that is, um, one, I'd love to find out. Um, I know uh, Jim Hebner is the tennis instruction that's um, contracted by the city, um, sort of what his future plans look like because he kind of takes up what, oh, maybe Todd is, can answer that. Yeah, so actually an update for you, Jennifer. So while Jim is out there still on a regular basis, Mm -hmm. Yeah, uh, during COVID, not that COVID is over, but during mm -hmm. uh, the pandemic, um, he uh, stopped as an official city contractor. Okay. So now all, all we are doing on court one is uh, rentals, whether okay. it be anybody, an instructor, mm -hmm. which Jim is certainly a big part of, um, or, or there's also regular groups of people that play out there that reserve the courts. So court one is the one court that's very regularly used throughout the day um, right now. So that, that court is full out there with, with um, reservations is the right way to say it. Gotcha. Cause maybe a thought around this would be to, it, you know, if that's the case, then now we could make a single, or just one thought out there, but as we're thinking about expansion and permanence, could we move pickleball to say one of the double courts 
if we, if, you know, we choose to make it permanent, say over there, and then change a single court to something that's a more reservation based um, instructional or, or reserved for, you know, I think it's also a great idea if you want to reserve it for your own, you know, pay the city play. It's, it's kind of more private in that sense. Um, and, and so maybe that's something for the staff to look at costs around that and feasibility and, and if that would make sense. Because I think if we take those two hand in hand, it sounds like, and, and I've witnessed this firsthand and I've gone there and I know people who play there and um, it's, you know, pickleball is really widely used. So um, whether we start first with the expansion and, and then make it permanent to see, see if that really works or kind of do it hand in hand, I do think we have the, the if we make it, they will come sort of thing. So I do think we have the, the usage um, for that. Um, and I do want to make a comment about the, the noise complaints. Um, this has been something I just want to say personally, because it, it kind of bugs me, especially after all the work we did on Neilon Park and the exceptional park that that is and the complaints we've got around noise about that. The whole idea of people choosing to live near a park is the concept that there will be usage and there will be noise and laughter. And um, these are all positive things um, and, and everyone has a choice. So I do understand if it's something so brutally terrible that they, they can't stand it. But to me, it doesn't sound like that. So I, I do want to say something in that you know, if we do expand, there will likely be more noise and it may be people talking. It may be car traffic. It may be more, you know, pings and pongs or whatever people are complaining about. But, um, I, I think everyone lives in the, the place that they live eyes wide open. And, um, I do think it makes sense to notify the community, um, of any changes, but I, I, I think if we go down the path and be honest of, you know, making concessions because of noise, we'll end up in a situation where we have incredibly expensive, wonderfully inclusive park um, equipment that is now not currently being used because of noise complaints and things like that. And I just wouldn't want that to happen with this. And I, and I, I think we open a can of worms and we go down like the wrong path for that. Um, so anyway, in sum, I, I guess what I was trying to get at is, is there some analysis or something that staff can do to say, let's, ex let's look at expanding to this set of courts, maybe moving reservations to a single court and then the cost to, you know, make it, make it permanent. Uh, I can feel that, you know, I think certainly, you know, the commission just unanimously uh, uh, voted to recommend to, to make the pilot program permanent. I think it is just the testimony that was that was heard this evening from pickleball users, all overwhelmingly positive. Um, it's clearly a very fast growing sport and there's a great demand for it in the community. And so, and it's really exciting to see, um, uh, you know, that that's what we're all about is creating those opportunities for community members to come together and, and recreate. So, you know, that's all great. Um, I do think, you know, you brought up a good point, Commissioner Baskin about sort of the, the permanence versus sort of the temporary, um, you know, the pilot project was let's convert an existing court, but we did hear a number of uh, pickleball users uh, extol the merits of a purpose-built court that's specifically designed for pickleball. So I think, you know, next steps are really looking at how can we best facilitate this activity in Menlo Park in a way that's, you know, fair, balanced, equitable, inclusive, um, and is, is done in such a way that, you know, it, it um, you know, maximizes the benefit. And, you know, we kind of heard about, you know, the permanent nets being a benefit, again, purpose-built courts being a real benefit. And so, and, you know, having tennis courts that are converted to pickleball or dual use, there's some challenges there because they're, they're, not, they're, they're, they're close, but they're not exactly the same. They don't overlay perfectly. So I think those are all the things that we need to take into consideration. And I'm happy to do it because it's, it's kind of exciting. It's got sort of a new new activity that's really gaining steam. So um, there'll be a little work involved in that. So, you know, I, I just want to be upfront, but I think it's worth it to put in the time to try to get it right uh, rather than have, you know, a lot of series of temporary solutions that maybe don't quite hit the mark. So I just want to kind of put that out there. Um, another thing I just wanted to mention, a, a couple of commenters talked about um, the fee 
access and the keys and you know there are some specific logistical challenges um so i i, I do think that you know it's coming upon us to kind of look at that and, and work through you know how, how does that play into all of this as well so um just, just been an excellent discussion and so uh, i hope you don't mind my little summary there at least for what i'm kind of gathering uh, from like kind of the staff perspective and, and what we kind of see as next steps so so to your point sean as far as next steps if the commission tonight agreed that yeah hey we need to uh it would be best if we you know expanded to you know two of the double tennis courts what would be the next step to accomplish that i think we'd need to do some uh analysis with our public works department in particular which really kind of maintains facilities and really would um conduct any kind of construction or modification work that might happen. There are certainly cost impacts associated, you know, with any, any capital project. There are, you know, sort of capacity considerations. The city has, has many projects uh, going on in the pipeline, including the projects that were already identified in the approved parks and recreation facility master plan, which are in motion. So, you know, that, I think that's kind of the next step is to, is to make those assessments with with the, those experts who, who you know are, are in the public works department and, and then you know really kind of get a, a sense of what all those factors are going to entail so that we can make an informed decision about you know how, how we could carry it out i think also um you know a couple of the comments just mentioned you know a palo alto a foster city and some other uh, courts that were either purpose-built or converted some of the pros and cons of those i think you know definitely doing a, a more detailed a scan of, of and discussion with our counterparts in those jurisdictions about you know how, how those have worked or not so that we can get some best practices into the mix so i, I hope that's helpful um, well just just kind of a clarifying question i guess what what i'm a little bit confused about is i don't know exactly the steps that were taken to put the four courts at kelly park or then putting the four courts on the one Nilon court, um, tennis court, all we're really talking about right now is instead of putting four pickleball courts down, we're just talking about putting eight pickleball court lines on. So I guess my clarifying question is, how is that different than what we did to put the four courts on the one Nilon court? Why is this, is this different? I don't understand. Well, well certainly more courts. Right, it certainly takes uh, mm -hmm. an, another tennis court and, and basically converts it to pickleball. And I think at this point we've been in sort of temporary pilot mode, trying it out, which is some simple restriping and some movable nets. But right. I think what we're hearing is there's a desire to maybe take that to the next level. So, you know, before we proceed to just kind of do another sort of patch, I think we'd want to kind of look at again, how do but what are the pros and cons of doing it that way as opposed to maybe taking a longer view uh, of, of uh, either a purpose-built court or choosing a location that is going to strike the right balance of, of meeting the growing need for pickleball, but also um, you know, uh, mitigating potential impacts to um, tennis court users, as well as you know, Nilon Park is the busiest um, location uh, for, for tennis. And pickleball in town at this point in time. So, so it's just, just more factors to consider when you take a pilot that initially started with one court at Kelly Park, you know, then expanded to a second court at Nealon. And now, you know, the discussion is to go to two courts that are, you know, kind of side by side, there'll be some additional work there. So, you know, that at some point, you know, and I think we've reached that point, um, sort of transition from kind of the quick, quick and easy, let's get it up and running to see how it goes. And now, talking about something that, you know, is contemplated as being maybe a little bit more permanent, uh, a little bit more involved. So I think, I think that's, those are the, kind of the primary differences at this point in time. Yeah. Did, I got that. Yeah, go ahead, Todd. Yeah. And just one thing, and Sean, maybe uh, we, we may have to, I don't, I don't want to always be the rules guy, but the policy may need to be looked at as well because, and I, and I only say technically we might end up violating the 50% policy, because it was before it was just tennis courts 
and we would now be reserving three courts that weren't available for tennis, leaving only two courts available for tennis. So that with the odd number of courts there, that bumps it up to 60%. But technically, it's a different sport and the courts are different. So I'm not sure. It would, we'd have, probably have to look at that too. Because the tennis user may come back and say, wait, this is your rule. We you seem to be, we want to have an answer for that question if it comes up. Gotcha. One other question to look into, I guess, um, uh, how much work or um, is it, uh, I guess when you're doing your analysis, I, maybe there's like a couple different iterations we could we could look at. One, um, doing the double courts in that more you know, temporary style and seeing how that works. Because um, can you just correct me if I'm wrong? It, is it possible just to, you know, Todd, to your point, if say we got, a, say we upset the tennis community in some sense, and it sounds like the tennis community is doing quite, happy with this where everyone seems to be in kumbaya um are you able to move things around um or it's not that easy and it's disruptive so we wouldn't want to do that say we started to see what this looked like with the extended hours on double courts etc but with temporary uh features yeah no i think we could do it the prob the, the issue that we may run into is that timing issue again where mm. if we give eight o'clock to three o'clock to pickleball and three o'clock to 10 o'clock back over to tennis, that, that could be an issue that could come up. But in terms of the equipment, um, if we're to, you know, we, we would have to, um, we'd have to drop in some lines. Um, there would still be tennis lines there. And basically we could take the temporary nets from court five and move them over onto one of the middle courts if we did that. Um, so the equipment moving and getting that set up is not that difficult. Um, Does the actual tennis net get removed? So say people wanted to then play tennis, um, what does it get dropped? But then they could easily raise it back up if they moved over pickleball um, equipment. Peter, you or... might know better than I. I think we left it. We left that tennis court net up, right, Peter? Yeah. Yeah, it's still yeah. Because the average person can't, um, two people can't unhook the, court and reattach it in the net and put it back up. That okay. So it's, yeah. it's usable both ways, I guess. Yeah. My, my one thing of understanding is like eight to three, I, I hear where people are coming from. If you work, it's, it's kind of impossible hours to really be inclusive of everyone. So, or even um, if you're in school. <laughs> um, so it's kind of both. And we're talking about this community spanning all ages. So um, the idea of expanding the hours definitely makes sense because I think there might be people we're missing out on or, or don't have the opportunity to play as much because of those hours. I think there's a question between an immediate need and a long-term um, solution. And the long-term solution obviously is uh, a more permanent and that requires a lot more study. Whereas the immediate need can be addressed by having temporary courts that can be converted from tennis usage to pickleball usage. And I don't know why that is so different, difficult because I, the sense that I got is that there are people waiting and there is no capacity. So can we increase the capacity, at least on a temporary basis, and then study the larger question of permanent solutions? Yeah, that's a great point. And I think, um, you know, we do have some data, you know, that, that indicates that, uh, you know, the most popular uh, courts for tennis users uh, by far are, are Neilon and, and Willow, Willow Oaks. So th again, that's why and the least used, I believe, are Kelly and then La Entrada. And, and then Burgess is kind of somewhere in the middle. So, um, you know, that's why, again, the, the, you know, the quick, you know, temporary, hey, let's get it up and running. It was it's sort of easy to say, hey, we'll just we'll put one at Kelly because those are very underutilized for tennis. And then with Nilon, you may recall, um, we kind of were able to adjust the, the reservation, which courts could be reservable so that in a way that the tennis court folks weren't necessarily losing some of that prime space 
uh, because we, we reduced the number of uh, courts that could be reserved. And so the drop-in users were not impacted really as far as like the sheer number of, of court hours available to them. If, uh, you know, the recommendation is to get some more courts up and running quickly, then I think, you know, the looking at the data that we have, the least impactful way to do that would be to look at um, one of the lesser used sites like La Entrada, for example, where the tennis court usage is pretty low and, and the risk is, is, is less that we would have you know, significant impacts on tennis users without first you know, kind of engaging them in a discussion about, you know, hey, this is what's being proposed. You know, I think to, to take another court at Milan without kind of doing that essential groundwork would, would sort of you know, not, not give those users the, the benefit of that. When we, when we know from our own study of, of the usage that, you know, that is the most used location. Can you use La Entrada during the school day? Uh, no, I think we only have it in outer school time. Uh, we only have it after school and uh, uh, approximately 3, 3.15, they get out. They also run a tennis program part of the year too uh, that goes until about 5.30. And so what about Burgess? You mentioned Burgess, is that a possibility? So right now, the way Burgess is configured, there are two courts. Um, one of them is available for reservations at all time, right? Leaving the other court free to meet our policy. But in the afternoon, starting at three o'clock and going till nine o'clock, Menlo Swim and Sport runs their um, after school tennis program on one of the courts. So if you were to convert the second court, you wouldn't have an open tennis court um, all week long in the evening. Right. So, so just to piggyback on this, this part of the conversation, which is really important, you know, uh, it, it's doable to like, you know, rearrange these things, but not advisable to just go forward and do it without you know, digging a little deeper into what those impacts might be and to come up with solutions to mitigate some of those because we do have kind of those existing policies and uses in place. So I just, I just wanna be clear, you know, what we're saying is not, oh, we can't do this. What we're saying is we believe it, it needs a little bit more process and attention uh, rather than just going in there and doing it. What sort, of, what sort of a timeline would you be looking at for doing this additional um, consideration of the path forward. Yeah, that's something we'd need to consult with our public works department about. As I mentioned earlier, you know, there are many projects that have already been in queue or in process throughout the city, including on recreation facilities. So I, I can't give you a clear answer to that question. However, I, I will say that, you know, clearly the interest uh, and demand for more pickleball access is there. And so, you know, we would want to move it as quickly as we can, um, but we also need to, be, you know, sort of acknowledge that, you know, there's only so much capacity within the city to, to tackle projects and to kind of fit them into the timeline. So, uh, but what we can do is uh, certainly by next month's meeting and public works will be here, we should be able to get, get a clearer sense from them, you know, kind of what, what is possible there as far as the, the physical component of it. Okay, thank you, that's a good answer. So getting just to the last, getting to the last item that was mentioned, are, Sean, are we able to at this point in time, at least just say, okay, we pickleball can have evening priority hours on the on the one court that uh, we have. Is that possible? You know, I hesitate to commit to that right this moment because I I do think again um, that the tennis court users should be apprised of that and we should have a look at it um, before such a change is made. So again, I would say we, we would wanna come back next month after having kind of done that outreach, um, just, just to be sure that you know, we're engaging all the parties who may be affected by it. Gotcha. Sean, would it help to, I know you'll do outreach to even agendize that. So if someone did want to come out and make a comment, like right now, 
the pickleball users were were clearly voicing and we had this on the agenda so a tennis user could have come out but if we make it really clear on an item that this is what's what's going to come out it gives them an opportunity to come out and say something and i mean it's sounding like if they were going to say something they probably would have said something here but it really maybe very thoroughly covers our outreach to the community yes i think so i mean i i don't think that tonight's item really clearly indicated that tennis court access would change exactly as That's, a result yeah. yeah so i think to your question yeah, we would want to make that more explicit okay so so yeah to the point of maybe agendizing that we would extend the hours so that they do have the opportunity to see it's out there and um they can outreach if, if any feelings on it i think that would be staff's recommendation to to take that path Okay, I think there's been a, a lot of good discussion uh, around pickleball, um, a lot of excitement moving forward, uh, a lot of things to look into. Um, I, I know we do have a few other things to, to cover this evening. Um, so unless anyone um, ha has another burning question, uh, I'd like to proceed to informational items. Um, last thing, last thing, just, just to cover all the comments that were made by the uh, public is that, again, just for the current situation at Nilon, um, one thing that would make a huge difference, again, just you know, at this point in time, and maybe this is something again, Sean, for for our February meeting when we talk to the the people that are joining us. But that uh, that opposite gate, uh, it looks like there was a gate there, and for some reason it was closed, but um, or locked up it seems like that would be a simple fix, but just throwing it out there because that was mentioned by several people as well. And that would make a huge difference because right now there's only one entry point and uh, it's a problem, so. Yeah, yeah, thank you for bringing that up. And definitely uh, did make a note of that. And I have heard that from some pickleball users and definitely will be talking to Public Works about, about that. Um, I did want to just uh, acknowledge the uh, the the, padlocking of the gate on Sunday. Um, I did have a conversation with the Public Works folks today about that, and uh, we, we don't know where, where that came from. So as soon as Public Works got the notice, and, and thank you to whoever reported that using the city's app, uh, ACT Menlo Park, also called C Click Fix, and Public Works was able to get out there and, and take that lock off of there. Um, and, but it, it was not a city lock, so I just wanted to kind of clarify that. Um, unexplained where that came from, but Public Works was quick to take it off of there. So then to Jennifer's point, are, are, are we at this point in time, can we make an agenda item for February about, you know, hey, moving from four pickleball courts to eight and give the community an opportunity to speak to that? Is that something we could put on the February agenda item list? I would recommend focusing on Willow Oaks um, next month because that was already in queue. Um, and, and those are kind of time sensitive um, project plans that look for those renovations to move forward in particular as it pertains to the dog park. Um, so I just wanna be you know, kind of cognizant of, of workload and time. So uh, I would say certainly this spring, uh, but I believe that of February that the focus really will be on, on, on the Willow Oaks. Okay, so maybe maybe March. Okay, thanks. Yeah, possibly, yes, thank you. And sorry, before we move on, I have one other comment I'd love to say. I, I just wanna thank the community for showing up. I think that there are meetings that we'll always remember. Um, one of them was when we renamed Carly Clark and we heard great feedback from the community and it makes you remember why you volunteer your time and your effort and why you care about this community. And it's just so awesome to hear from everyone of different ages and parts of town who are just really enjoying this and are supporting um, what we're doing. So we really appreciate it. And, and thank you for also being so timely with your comments. And gosh, we wish we had this many people for every meeting. 
<laughs> so thanks again. Awesome. Yeah, I'll echo that sentiment as well as I think uh, the, the other commissioners would um, also. But um, yeah, so we'll move on to informational items. Uh, informational items are transmitted to the Parks and Recreation Commission in staff's effort to provide an update on matters of importance to the commission. Informational items are not action items, however. Uh, commissioner, city staff member, or a member of the public may request to make a comment or ask a question on any of the informational items. So our first uh, item is our, I guess, is department update by Director Reinhardt. Thank you, Chair Thomas. Just a couple of quick updates. Um, one is I want to um, give the commission a heads up that the city council on February 8th will uh, review the aquatics operator agreement. Um, this is something that they have done around this time each year for the past couple of years. Because right now that contract is only kind of a 12 year, uh, a 12 month term, excuse me. Uh, and um, it's the, the, uh, the February timeframe is, is a key date for any notifications about potential changes um, to the agreement. The current agreement is set to expire in August, um, which is six months hence, and um, unless there's a notification at this point in time of any changes in it would auto renew. So that's the reason for the timing. And again, that'll be on February 8th. Um, and as you know, the, the current operator has been there for uh, quite some time, about 15 years or so, is um, Team Sheeper Inc. It operates it as a mental swimming sport. And then the other thing uh, is that um, the city clerk will be announcing advisory body recruitments, recruitments for commissioners um, next month in February, I believe there's one uh, vacancy on the commission currently. So I would strongly encourage commissioners, if you know others uh, in the community, uh, residents of Menlo Park who, who meet the qualifications, um, who might be interested in, in applying to serve on a, on a city commission. As you all can attest, it's a very rewarding experience. And uh, we're very grateful for those uh, residents who step up to assist there. Um, and so when that announcement comes out, I just would strongly encourage commissioners to, to relay that information to folks who you think might be interested and able to serve. Uh, and those are the updates. Thank you. Director Reinhardt, one, one other um, clarifying point on um, commission service and recruitment. Um, it, does the city council still regularly review, I guess, annually or around the time of recruitment, um, commissioner attendance and um, like commitment of that requirement in order to make sure that we're maintaining um, the right quorum and the right people on the commission? Uh, yes, um, I'm looking to assistant director Jacques, who might be a little more conversant with the details of that. Yes, they do. The city clerk um, presents a report to the council every year on commissioner attendance, where they basically just map out all of the different commissions and commissioners and what their attendance was for the previous year. Um, at that point, you know, there are some uh, requirements. I think it's two thirds of the meetings uh, that they would uh, have active commissioners attend. Um, the council can take action um, to remove commissioners who have not met that standard. That's not a regular kind of thing where they do that, um, but they do look at it every year. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Perhaps our uh, our next Parks and Recs commissioner um, is you know has been on the call tonight. Perhaps we'll get a a pickleball enthusiast. So um, if if that wraps up F one, we can move to informational item F two, uh, agenda planning. Or sorry, I, I guess are there any. Um, Assistant Director Shagda, are there any public comments on the department updates? Uh, my apologies there. I was clicking onto the, the calendar. Um, if there's any uh, member of the public who wants to make a comment on item F1, department updates, please use that raise hand function now. And seeing none. All right, great. Let's move to the calendar. Uh, Assistant Director Shagby, you want to <laughs> take over? Sure thing. So I pulled up, actually, I've uh, pulled up the, the draft calendar for next month, 
figuring I could just sort of add things in there. Um, and uh, you can see there we have uh, the Burgess and Willow Oaks uh, renovation project updates from the, our public works team and their consultants. Um, we'll be able to report out um, on any council action taken on the review of the aquatics program. Um, I've added here in this highlighted item in May, uh, the selection of a commission chair and vice chair. Um, I, I, that's sort of a placeholder item because I know it happens sometimes in May and sometimes in June, depending on when new members are appointed to the commissions. Um, then if we scroll down, uh, you see we've started to fill in some of the MPCC programming element reviews, which we talked about back at our November joint meeting with the Library Commission. Um, there's some just some sketched out policy reviews later in the year, and then uh, some unscheduled future items um, where we have some things, but we don't have, we have topics, but we don't have dates yet set for them. I'll stop there and uh, open it up for the commissioners. Do any commissioners ha have anything to add to this? Okay, great. Um, did we want to put something, I'm sorry, uh, Chair Thomas, did we want to put a sort of at least a placeholder item for um, the bringing the pickleball back, maybe um, expanding the, the pickleball hours? Good point. Um, would you mind scrolling up a little bit? Sure, I'm sorry. Is there, because I assume we'd want to do that sooner than, um, you know, next fall. So is there a, a kind of a natural time for that? Would, would next month be too soon? I mean, the reason next month might be good is because that's before we have all the, you know, MPCC programming. I don't think that we would be able to do all of the preparatory work um, in time for February. And, and again, the, the focus will be on the Burgess and Willow Oaks renovation project. And I, I anticipate um, a, a pretty hefty discussion around that, even, even just based, including Pickleball, as we heard this evening. So, so I, I would recommend looking at uh, later in the spring. Um, it certainly lightens up as we move out of the MPCC programming um, items. Um, so in March, we really need to kind of finalize some of the programming elements in the new facility in order to make ready. And I, I anticipate that'll be a, a, a fair amount of discussion around that topic. Uh, but then it does sort of ease up in April and May. So um, if you were to ask just from a kind of a staff capacity and, and doing the, the groundwork, perspective so the commission can have all the information at hand. Uh, I, I would I would recommend April or later. Perfect. Let's put it on the calendar for April. We can revisit in the coming um, meetings. Um, is there anything else that we want to put on the, the agenda, commissioners? Okay. So, um, and then Assistant Director Shega, are there any public comments? Any member of the public would like to uh, make a comment on the agenda planning calendar, raise your hand. Looks like we have one comment from JD Tapp. Go ahead, you can unmute yourself and address the commission. Hi, doctor, just kidding. So, um, <laughs> you know, we could have it in February because we play at night. Tennis never comes on at night, ever. Was that an agenda item? They, we really have priority all day long. It's just not official. Trust me, they love us. They do. Come, come play with us. They're never there, ever. Thank you. Thanks very much for your comment. Anyone else uh, like to make a comment on the agenda planning calendar? Um, maybe one um, 
piece of feedback in the past. Um, I guess it was, I want to say it was the Complete Streets Commission or either the Building Commission had updated um, Parks and Rec about um, the development that's going along uh, the middle corridor and across the way on El Camino and that's being built up. Um, if there's ever any update on um, what sort of passage may or may not be going through there or what sort of um, park space or accessibility, that would be great to just uh, get the, an update the middle. That. I think you're talking about the middle avenue undercrossing, right? The one that goes yes. under the railroad from um, near the basketball skate park in Burgess Park to the new development, the new state. Yes, group. yes. El Camino Real development. Okay. I think that would be good for us to get an update on just because now we're actually seeing the structures there, kind of what, you know, what, what's, what's being talked about or worked on. And I'm, I'm putting in an unscheduled just because I don't know who we could get or when we could get anybody. That's great. That That's great. I don't see any other public comment, Chair Thomas. Okay, great. We can move to commissioner reports. Um, I'll start this one off with, uh, and, and um, Assistant Director Shagio, would you mind sharing your screen and going to the uh, park tour slides? And then just so other commissioners know, this is in the agenda. Um, if you wanna follow along, I'm gonna go through it quickly here to be respectful of people's time. So we're gonna to try to do park tours um, this quarter. And the first two slides of this kind of uh, lay out the motivation and um, we can probably go to the next slide and why we want to do this now. Um, so I'll let you, you know, peruse this on, on your own time. The, if we go to the next slide, so the plan, what we're gonna to try to do is have teams of two visit parks in a given region. Uh, and so there'll be one uh, commissioner kind of leading this. Um, and these will be scheduled independently and the planning lead can really take ownership and uh, choose you know, what they, they want to cover, who they want to invite, et cetera. If we go to the last slide, so I'm hoping the planning leads mentioned in the previous slide, um, you know, before our next meeting, we'll get started on this. And so this slide lays out the responsibilities. So I'll just quickly go through them. So the first is to find three times that work for the two assigned commissioners, uh, and then finalize two or three parks, recreation facilities to tour in your kind of give allocated region. And then once you have this, if you could send that to assistant director uh, Shegda, and then he will be kind of the um, hub and to kind of reach out to uh, everyone on the staff and, and public works side of things. And then as an, you know, an individual tour starts to, to crystallize, um, the planning leads can choose whether they want to invite or advertise this to members of the public. Uh, but we'd ask that they also uh, notify city council liaison, uh, Drew Combs, who I think is on this meeting, um, so that uh, he's aware of this. And then in a future meeting, um, I'm hoping the commissioners will give a short um, kind of report on their experience. And um, yeah, that, that's it. And I might uh, reach out to some uh, some groups individually. Would love to hear if anyone has any concerns, but otherwise the expectation is that before our next meeting, the planning leads, and maybe if we could go to slide four real quick, just to review who those are. Um, so that's myself, Commissioner Baskin and Commissioner Diefenbrock. Uh, so it's your responsibility to start reaching out to your, your partner and to really kind of uh, get this on the schedule. Okay, any comments or feedback on this plan?
Okay, so, awesome. So wait, wait, wait. So how, so we pick uh, some dates, we agree on some dates, we let Sean know what days and times work, and then how does it get out to the community to see who's interested? How does that work? I think that's really on the planning lead. And we, you can also work with assistant director Shedga. Um, and so since you're a planning lead, it's, it's kind of up to you, you know, if you want to advertise it in your own circles or, you know, perhaps talk, you know, talk to uh, assistant director Shedga about, you know, maybe publicly advertising it on, you know, some city, you know, website. But the whole idea is you can kind of, you know, go as far with that as you feel comfortable and would like to. I see. Okay. Thanks. And then Commissioner Baskin, I believe that you've done these before. And so curious if, if there's, if you'd want to chime in. Yeah, I think, um, so one thing I did like about it, um, and I, I don't know if this would be work for staff. So of course you guys are overworked and I don't want to create more work, but in the past when we would do a park tour or the, it would be a, an agendized meeting that would be a park tour. So the community would know that we are at that park and if they were there and wanted to, you know, talk to us or, or, um, <clears throat> meet with us, um, they would know that we're there. So that's one possibility, but really the idea is to get to know the park, um, talk to the community members there, get some feedback, really engage. So whether, um, you know, the leads do wanna share with staff the date they're going and if there need, could be some communication out to the public, that would be great. Um, if not, then we should take it upon ourselves to engage with the public there and get some feedback. Um, from park users and, and group users there. Um, so the idea is just tour it, um, take some notes, like you said, report back to the, to the, the group here, what you've learned um, and just, yeah, yeah have, have open eyes. And um, I think it also makes a difference. We used to always tour during our current meeting time. So I think now um, that it's, we have a little bit more flexibility and freedom. Also taking the time into account, you know, I think if you're going to go toward it at 7 a.m., you're probably not going to find as many people using it. So maybe the idea is maybe try to go at a time where people are using the park. <laughs> That's just some comments. And to, to adding on to Vice Chair Baskin's comment, um, from the staff side, it's actually easier not to agendize it as a, as a meeting, um, just because there's a lot of Brown Act um, uh, requirements okay. that go along with agendizing the meeting. So um, if it, it depends, we can do that. Um, and it has been done in the past, but we also have other ways. If, if, the, if the main idea is to sort of get the word out that to people that commissioners are going to be at the park, uh, we have other avenues, we have other channels that we can get the word out um, we have a newsletter that we send out to um, library and community services subscribers. So there's the city website and the city calendar and the, the social media channels that we can use. Yeah, I, I really don't want to create more work or anything that would um, have us kind of be concerned about Brown Act type um, discussion. So if it's in the spirit of just, you know, open comms and, and just being more in touch with the community. Um, if it's a way that just kind of is able to say, oh, commissioners will be at this park or something like that, that's great. And if not, you know, we can be proactive and engaging with the community there. Okay, great. Um, yeah, and I think this was a, a longer meeting than, than usual, so. Yeah, thank you to all the staff and you know, all the commissioners um, for being here tonight. You know, many of you are volunteering your time. Uh, at this point, I think we can adjourn the meeting at 9.31 p.m. Thank you all very much. Thanks, thank you, members of the thank public, you. for attending. Thanks. Good night.